Welcome to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, be bold, be confident, live fearless. We have a rematch of last year's 1AA State Championship and alongside my partner Peter Montemurno, Evan Budjervich with you. The Tarboro Vikings have won 44 straight games, the fourth best mark in the country. East Surrey lost your last year's title and are trying to take down the Vikings tonight. What must they do to get the victory? Well, head coach Trent Loman of the East Surrey Cardinals has been waiting for this game for 364 days. And if for, in order for them to take down Jeff Craddock's Tarboro Vikings, the air attack has to be on full display with Jefferson Boaz tonight. East Surrey, the best passing attack in the state of North Carolina. And time now for our Ingalls Food for Thought. The Tarboro Vikings trying to defend their two-time state championship. What must they do to slow down Jefferson Boaz? Well, I think they have to pressure the middle and pressure from the outside, but they have to keep him contained. you got to remember, he has 16 rushing touchdowns on the year to his 58 passing touchdowns of the year. They have to pressure him. If you are East Surrey on the defensive side of the ball because of that, unbelievable Tarboro T offense and the option, you have to do your job. Play your 111th every play. This is going to be a great game tonight. When we come back, a rematch of last year's final. It's the 1AA State Championship presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Tarboro and East Surrey coming up next. When was the last time you felt free. It's time to uncover that feeling again with the compassion of a cross and shield widely accepted by doctors and specialists and the power of a card that opens doors in all 50 states giving you the freedom to love to dream to dance like no one is watching. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina live fearless. This is where it starts where your story begins. This is the trail you blaze yourself. And step by step, you get stronger, faster, better. This is where it starts. How will you finish? Angles, we're with you every step of the way. Welcome back to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. It's Tarboro and East Surrey, a rematch of last year's championship. And for more on tonight's matchup, we go down to Chris Hooks. Thank you very much, Evan. The sign on the banner that Tarboro ran through says, you came to play, but we came to win. And boy, they have certainly done that. You talk about their 40 four game win streak. It was something that Coach Craddock dreamed up. Again, he wanted that program to be a national program when he wrote a three page letter in 2007 when he got the head coaching job and he's certainly done that. Hopefully his no name team can do it here tonight to make it 45. On the other side, East Surrey, since that second half butt whooping, as Coach Lohman so well put it, this team has been focused. They've been very focused. They have certainly had one goal in mind, and that's to get back to this ball game and have an opportunity to win a state championship. We'll see if they do that here tonight. Back to you guys. What a matchup for East Surrey. An undefeated regular season. It was a close game at halftime when these teams met last year, and then Tarboro ran away. It's been on the mind of Trent Lohman since that game last year. 364 days, Coach Trent Lohman said it. You know, they've been prepared for it every day, training in the offseason, and they feel like they have the ingredients to avenge that loss last year. What a tough matchup for Trent Lohman's club as he looks to slow down this Tarboro rushing attack. We now have the captains for both teams at midfield to get us all set for this rematch. A matchup of so many unique layers that goes into this. Tarboro, a six-time champion. East Surrey, they have never won a state title in football. And a chance to do it here tonight at Wallace Wade Stadium here at Brooksfield. And now we wait for our opening coin toss. That's Clay Craddock, the captain and the son of his head coach. East Surrey is the home team in this matchup as the East Regional Champion. So Tarboro will call the coin. Mm -hmm. 
The decision now in the hands of East Surrey and their quarterback, Jefferson Boaz, the North Carolina commit. Turn your back. We wondered coming in, Peter, how this would unfold, and guess what? East Surrey won it's the, the high so flying it. offense. They Again, want the football hands, first, and the best offense the game. Good in luck, North gentlemen. Carolina will get a chance to score early. Sure, and Coach Trent Loman talked about it this week, that he has nine returners, nine starters that are returning on this squad for the offense, six on the defense. Again, they cannot wait to play this game. They've waited all year for it. And, hey, Coach Jeff Craddock on Tarboro, too, knows it. He understands it. We talked to him this week. He knows the offensive firepower that East Surrey brings to this football game. Jeff Craddock in his 20th year on this staff, his 15th as the head coach, He's won five titles as a part of the Tarboro program. Looks to continue that here tonight. Jeff Craddock, an emotional game for him, knowing his son will finish out his career tonight. And what a matchup of these two heavy hitters in North Carolina. Two of the top 20 teams in the max prep ratings as well. So not only two of the best in one AA, maybe two of the best in the state getting after tonight. And you can't ask for two different styles. You get the high flying, greatest show on turf, if you will with the East Surrey Cardinals led by quarterback Jefferson Boaz. And then you have the Tarboro T for Jeff Craddock's Vikings when it, with a great quarterback running the engine of that Tarboro T, that option, Kamani McDaniels. Evan, this is going to be a great matchup. Alongside Peter Montemurno and Chris Hooks, Evan Budrovich with you tonight for the 1AA state championship game. And to kick this ball off and get things started, it's Leighton Dupree, the sophomore He's a big guy, 6'4", ready to kick this ball off and get us rolling here at Brooks Field at Wallace Wade Stadium. And away we go. The rematch is underway. East Surrey to return from their 10-yard line. An early tackle just outside the 20-yard line is this hard-hitting Rams defense. And Jordan Williams, the sophomore, makes the tackle. We get a chance now to look at the best offense in all of North Carolina. It's the East Surrey Cardinals averaging 53 points per game, led by their North Carolina commit in the quarterback, Jefferson Boaz, in our North Carolina High School Athletic Association starting lineup. Three receivers with double-digit touchdown catches this year. This offense can sling it all over the field. Boaz back to work. First and 10 from his 22-yard line. Boaz with an empty set. Right down the sideline, has a wide open man, and the catch is made. What a start by Elijah Wright, a gain of 22 yards on first down. So they talked about adding pressure and that down. Tarboro Vikings, they came out with three rushers on the defensive line, dropped everybody back into coverage. But a great job by Elijah Wright getting up the boundary, the empty set in the motion, threw Tarboro off in their defense just a bit. That's a Ridley and Brandt. Brantley first down is what a stop on this defense. Big tackle by number 17, Micah Taylor. Ridley and Brantley, call Riddle and Brantley today. And injured in an accident, they can help when justice calls. Here's the North Carolina High School Athletic Association starting defense for Tarboro. They have only given up 41 points all season. This defense can get after the quarterback. Boaz on the play action. Jefferson throws the near sideline. The catch is made, and out of bounds goes Landon Stevens. He is also a North Carolina commit, and a first down pitch and catch to the 39. This is exactly what we expected coming out. High flying, airflow. They're getting up to the line of scrimmage, making calls. You, those types of routes, Evan, are designed. It's all about timing. Landon Stevens, a senior. Jefferson Boaz, a senior. Those guys have been doing this for such a long time. Looks crisp to start tonight. That's a riddle, and Brantley first down to move the chains. Boaz now on a tunnel screen to Stevens. Boaz finds his man. Stevens is gone. 39 yards to the house, and in a minute and 11 seconds, the high-flying Cardinals are soaring. Well, here we go, the slip screen. Head coach Jeff Tarboro talked about it. Jeff Craddock talked about it from Tarboro this week. He said they have the best slip screen that he has ever seen in the years he's been coaching. Came to here to Tarboro since 1997, and they really do. And you saw right there Landon Stevens, the senior, taking it to the house for his 20th touchdown on the year. Stevens over 1,200 yards receiving, and the East Surrey Cardinals want to change the narrative from last year's 
50 to 10 loss. Here comes the extra point on the way. And that kick is drilled by Derek Sutterby. And here come the East Surrey Cardinals. We see there on the replay. That was the slip screen there. Landon Stevens, he comes back towards the middle of the field. And he, look how he bends it out to the boundary and then right into the end zone. A great job by the offensive line to get out there. Again, the slip screen, a great job. Great execution by East Surrey. Tarboro in this entire state playoff run had given up just six points. That's been eclipsed in the first minute, and it's Landon Stevens, one of the best receivers in this state, collecting his 20th touchdown. And the one thing you saw with Jefferson Boaz right off the bat is he's seen the entire field, even when Tarboro is dropping eight guys into coverage. What a challenge here for Jeff Craddock, the head coach, in his 15th year at Tarboro. That Tarboro T offense, so efficient. They run the ball for 286 yards per game. But for the first time in over two months, they're playing from behind. And this offense has to go to work. It's a great point. They've given up an average of two points this entire season in each game. Two points. And they're well below that already to start this game. They haven't had the ball yet. Tarboro has not lost since the regional final in 2016. There's a long way to go in this one. Yes. But East Surrey has thrown the first punch. And normally you see teams that win the toss, Evan, they defer to the second half, but they wanted a chance to showcase this offense. Jefferson Boaz on that drive, three for three, 76 yards down the field. And now Sutterby boots it away. Low kick, Perkins bobbles at his five yard line. Now Javorius Perkins cuts across the field. Tough angle to work with for Perkins. Has a block out past the 15 and is knocked out of bounds just outside the 20 as Tarboro will go to work here on their first drive. Boy, almost ran 120 yards just to get about 10 yards, but a good job. Nonetheless, it, 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 hey, you got to have a good return uh, if it's kicked that deep. And he took the chance of taking it out to the, out, the far side boundary and does a nice job getting it to the 20. Here today is North Carolina High School Athletic Association starting lineups. Kamani McDaniels is your quarterback, and that rushing attack led by Stanton and Powell. So electric, 1-2. This is the Tarboro T. Toughest offense to stop on the ground in all of 1AA. And an opening carry is spun down for a gain of two yards. That's Benji Gosnell, the senior on the tackle. Nice job by Benji Gosnell. And the one thing that the defense has to do against this Tarboro T, if they're going to be successful, each of those guys has a job to do. They can't worry about the guy next to them. They have to do their job. Gap integrity, stay in the gap, get off blocks, fly to the football. That is the recipe for success against an offense like the Vikings has. Here are North Carolina Athletic Association starting lineups. Keep an eye out for the defensive lineman Isaac Washington. Over 100 tackles this year. And that defensive line is all over this inside handoff. No gain on the play for Tarboro, setting up a third and long on this opening drive. Isaac Washington leading the charge on the inside, number 13, along with Benji Gosnell again inside. This defensive line has to be stout tonight. Putting the Vikings in the third and long situation is exactly what they designed coming into this game. You have a game plan for the first series. Three and out. And they're on the cusp of that right here. Benjamin Gosnell now with 85 tackles on the season. This East Surrey club, they only give up 12 points per game. Third and seven for Tarboro. McDaniels under center, tosses it out right. Here's a lane for Robinson out past the 30. And enough for a first down goes Cameron Powell all the way out to the 32-yard line, moving the chains on third down. That's a Riddle and Brantley first down. Injured in an accident, call Riddle and Brantley today. First down. You see here, that was a nice sweep on the outside. Just Kamani turning around and giving it to the outside back. Cameron Powell gets it out to the near side. Good job by Christian Harrison, the tackle, setting the edge and allowing Powell to get to the outside. Cameron Powell in this rushing attack, one of five players over 400 yards Amazing. on the ground, a balanced rushing attack for Tarboro. So movement at the line, and there's a flag thrown on the far side of the field. Let's see if East Surrey was drawn offside by some movement. Five to the snap. Encroachment, defense, five yards. First down. That could have been called on a couple of East Surrey defenders, and you see Isaac Washington there 
He has offers from North Carolina, NC State, Clemson, among the ranks in the ACC, and he is what they call a man-child on defense. It's amazing how many Division I athletes that this East Surrey team has and shows, showcasing it tonight so far. With the penalty, it's a first and five for Tarboro. McDaniels goes to number one, Khalil Stanton. He finds an avenue into East Surrey territory. A foot race down the near sideline, and Stanton is into the end zone. What a response by Tarboro. And the Vikings are on the board. Evan, that's what you have with this Tarboro T offense. They can have two yards, one yard, and set you up for a third and long, and they can gas you for seven yards. That is why you have to play important defense. I just see the handoff right there to the outside. Staten broke through a tackle, gets to the near side boundary, up the boundary, out the door, pay dirt for Khalil Staten. 63 yards for the Tarboro tailback. Now on the board, extra point on the way. This one just sneaks through the post. We are tied at seven on the touchdown by Khalil Staten. When we come back, more from the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, one AA state championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Sportsmanship begins at home. It begins with an attitude that how you play matters more than the final score. Sportsmanship isn't something you choose to do at certain times. It requires constant effort. The score of any athletic event is generally forgotten over time. But the actions of players, coaches, and spectators can result in lifelong memories. Help us make the right call by exhibiting good sportsmanship at all times. Sportsmanship. sportsmanship. Together, Together, we make the right call. This message brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association with North Carolina Farm Bureau. Welcome back to the 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. The Tarboro Vikings respond with an impressive 63-yard rushing touchdown by Khalil Staten. And here comes Tarboro, the two-time defending champions, back even at seven. Our football is now presented for the kickoff duties. And away we go in a back and forth moving first quarter. Two touchdowns in less than four minutes. Ooh. One via the air and one via the rushing attack. We talked about two teams that are completely different offensive scheme wise and both of them executed the game plan coming out of the pregame perf to perfection. Leighton Dupree now to kick this ball off. East Surrey does have three kick return touchdowns on the season. Always dangerous. And the ball has rolled off the tee for the second time. So Dupree's going to phone a friend to help hold the football. Let's see who elects to take those duties. Smart decision. Go with your quarterback, Kamani McDaniels. Well, this is going to be interesting to watch now to see how Jefferson Boaz and East Surrey respond to that quick strike by Tarboro. Stevens and Gosnell back deep to receive. The two best receivers for East Surrey. They're standing at their 10-yard line. Now it's Gosnell down the middle of the field, up the hash marks, and Gosnell just inside the 30. We go down for more on East Surrey's offense with Chris Hooks. As you can see underneath the East Surrey bench, you see five sets of cowboy hats. Well, that is the offensive line. They call themselves the Fat Cowboys. And you know what they devour? Pancakes on their helmets. When they get a pancake, they get a pancake sticker. Back to you guys. A little Old Town Road vintage Durham here tonight for the East Surrey Cardinals out of Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, a town of 1,600. Might be just as much here tonight. Our first rushing attempt of the night for East Surrey, and it goes nowhere. Molly Wapped with Kadavian Barnes in on the tackle. A loss of two on the carry. Yeah, he's all pumped up. He should be. Kadavian Barnes, 54 tackles coming into tonight. The 258-pound senior just gets through the line of scrimmage and makes plays. That's the sign of a great defensive line where you can on full in full speed, get off a block and make a play. No room for Elijah Wright setting up second and 12. Boaz in the gun, slings it out right. Good catch by Elijah Wright, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage before being tackled in open space 
A third and ten coming up. That was a great job by number six, Travis Johnson, on the outside for Tarboro, making sure that he protected the edge, set it, and not allowing Elijah Wright to get up the field to make a play. East Surrey has averaged 18 points per game in the first quarter this year. Now on drive number two, facing a third and nine. Boaz with five receivers on the field. Boaz looks to keep the play alive. Holding on for dear life, throwing to the sideline. That ball is caught. Gosnell is short of the sticks. A fourth and about one coming up on an impressive finish. Gosnell somehow, and Stevens makes the play. Let's see what East Surrey does here on fourth and one. This is a big, big call here. Looks like they're keeping it on, keeping it out there. The offensive out there. As you see, Boaz go to the outside. That's the only place he could have caught it was right there, which is still a yard short. Here we go, fourth and one. Boaz at six foot eight goes under center. The quarterback hands it off, and that's a first down. Diving Ooh. over the sticks, Stephen Gosnell. He's Surrey moving the chains, a riddle, and Brantley first down. Well, that motion that they ran by Kyler Jessup on the outside, it looks like that just to do that takes the eyes of the defender to the backfield and just takes them off just a hair in order for them to get that one yard. Gosnell last week, four rushes for 18 yards. This time it's an end around, and Tarboro is all over it. A huge loss in the backfield. Excellent tackle by Javais Massenberg, the senior. Number 11, 227-pound senior Massenberg. Setting that edge again on that side. The discipline he shows, not falling for any misdirection in the backfield. As you see here in the bottom of your, to the left of your screen, Massenburg comes and plays outside in, keeps his outside shoulder free, squeezes it down, makes a nice tackle second and long. Christian, the train Harrison also in there on the stop. As Boaz looks to his left, Jefferson slings it across the middle. The catch is made by Stevens out across midfield. Stevens jukes past the defender and all the way to the 41 yard line goes Landon Stevens. A huge pitch and catch of 24 yards. Zone coverage again and I tell you what, Jefferson Boaz has a rope. He stepped into that throw and delivered it on a dime right into the chest of Stevens for the first down. Landon Stevens. 50 catches coming into this game. Three different receivers with 50 or more catches. Jefferson Boaz can move the ball all around the field. A big reason why he leads North Carolina with over 400 or over 4,000 yards passing, I should say. Boaz now in the empty set. A pump fake looking for the end zone. Deep throw. Catch is made inside the five. And into the end zone goes Steven Gosnell. 41 yards putting East Surrey out in front. Unbelievable throw by Jefferson Boaz, but even a better job by the offensive line to give him time. They rushed four on that play, dropped everybody else back. As you see, he was looking for him right away. Pump faked it, as you can see there, allowing Gosnell to get separation against the defender going into the end zone for six. Partner, we may have a back and forth affair tonight. The ground game and the air attack on full display tonight. Extra point from Sutterby upcoming. And it's 14 to 7 East Surrey. The rematch has lived up to the billing here in the first quarter. When we come back more from the 1AA state championship game as Stephen Gosnell puts East Surrey out in front.
Stephen Gosnell ranks fourth in the state of North Carolina in receiving yards. His latest touchdown of 41 puts East Surrey out in front, 14 to 7. Here on the 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield North Carolina. Trent Lohman, he was a confident coach about his offense, and they have been firing on all cylinders. He was very confident coach, and you could see why with a quarterback like Jefferson Boaz and a receiver like Stephen Gosnell and, and Landon Stevens in the first series, they look unstoppable right now. And the one thing about Boaz, he throws it to a spot, and the receivers run to it. That's the difference with this quarterback, and especially when you have a quarterback who's a senior, and two of your best receivers are also seniors, that's just four years of work every day, reps. That's the timing that comes with the veteran leadership from these three guys. Jefferson Boaz today, seven for seven, 150 yards passing. Here's a squib kick midway through the first quarter. Catch is made by Tarboro and out across the 35-yard line. That's Cameron Powell on the return. And at the 36 officially, Tarboro gets the football. They wasted no time. Four carries for 75 yards their first drive. Now they start from the 36. Well, the one thing that they did well, they got to the perimeter quickly, and the inside runs, they didn't have much success. So I'd like to see in this second series of theirs what they do. They got to the perimeter, perimeter had some success. Does East Surrey change their way of their defending the edge on this series after seeing that long touchdown run? Kamani McDaniels, the senior, was moved to quarterback last year. He has taken over the reins this season. And McDaniels goes to Staten on first down. A huge chunk of yards as he'll keep his feet moving, dragging a defender out to the 45, and finally wrestled down by Elijah Wright after a gain of nine. Yeah, he had about six yards and didn't stop moving his legs, and the East Surrey defenders stopped moving their legs, and that's why he picked up another three of the inside handoff there to Staten, as you can see, getting through. And everybody thought he was down as he was moved there, but he kept his hand on the ground, as you can see right there. Kept his legs moving, wasn't down. Picks up another three yards. Great effort by the senior. He stayed on top of Quincy Smith, number one, the That's linebacker, right. and was able to pick up a couple extra yards. McDaniels now shovels it outside. Powell with room to run to the sideline. Gets a block and out to midfield goes Cameron Powell, the all-purpose senior, picking up a Riddle and Brantley first down. And that's the toughest thing, Evan, that a defense has to deal with as a quarterback who hides the football as well as Kamani McDaniels does. And that play, he turns around, his back to the defense, hiding the football until the last second when he gets it over to Cameron Powell, takes it off to the far side to pick up a first down. Quick moving first quarter as Tarboro looks to tie it on their second drive. McDaniels goes inside and shoved down at the line of scrimmage. Travis Johnson, no room to run. And for more, we go down to Chris Hooks. You know, guys, you talk about the success of that Tarboro T. One thing that you will notice about them, Peter, I know you and I talked about it, watch how they carry out the fakes. No matter who gets the ball, they all look like they have it. And that's part of the deception that they're able to, to pull off. And that's why, one thing, having great athletes helps, but that's just why they're so successful as well, because sometimes you don't know who has it. Fascinating to watch against an East Surrey defense that gives up just 12 points per game. Take it on the Tarboro T. 300 yards rushing per contest as McDaniels squirts to the outside, breaks through a tackle, and he's near the 40-yard line as McDaniels drags three defenders with them. A third and short coming up for Tarboro. He does that pirouette in the backfield again, and Chris is right. It looks like every single skill guy gets the football on plays like that, but Kamani McDaniels comes out and makes a great play, a lot of speed to the outside there. Again, third and short, a lot of different things can happen on this play, and I think this is four down territory for Tarboro. Tarboro has been scoring at will this year, averaging 50 points per game, and now knocking the door with a third and three coming up. Powell goes outside. Gosnell spins him out of bounds, but not before a first down. Cameron Powell moves the chains for the second time on this drive. That's a Riddle and Brantley first down. Another quick hitting play there for Cameron Powell. Only got a couple, but only needed a couple to keep the chains moving and keep the Tarboro offense out on the field. And that's what Coach Craddock talked about. Three yards, he doesn't care. As long as the chains keep moving and he wants to keep the offense of East Surrey on the bench. 
East Surrey has made multiple subs on the D-line, including Sam Witt, the sophomore number 52 now in there. Just trying to slow down this Tarboro T. McDaniels on the keeper. McDaniels gets outside. Inside the 30. McDaniels down near the 25-yard line. It's the cornerback, Kamani McDaniels. A nice run of 15 yards to move the chains. He is fast. He is quick. Again, the pirouette. He follows his blockers to the outside. Once he gets up to that second level, you have to take a better angle of pursuit. Ty Needham, number 20 for the Cardinals on the near side boundary. He was too shallow inside. You got to come up the field with a guy like that. You're not going to catch up to him when he's full speed. That's a Riddle and Brantley first down. Injured an accident call. Riddle and Brantley today when justice counts. Peter, how about this Tarboro rushing attack? I mean, it's something else. You see the line, the splits are huge, so they're trying to spread the defense out a little bit. And as you see, Ty Needham, too shallow inside, and he was able to give Kamani McDaniels the outside so he can get the big pickup there for a first down. But yeah, you're right, Evan. This rushing attack is fast, and they're efficient. The Tarboro rushing attack, over 4,000 yards, the two-time defending champions. They have six different rushers with 400 or more yards. It's any single player that can beat you. And tonight, it's been McDaniels and Staten going to work. Yeah, 286 yards per game they average. It's, it's incredible on the ground. And you can see why so far when Kamani McDaniels leading this charge so far tonight. The speed that he has in the perimeter. So if I'm East Surrey on the defensive side of the ball, being very wary on the outside, they got number two playing Kyler Jessup on the outside. Sometimes he switches based upon the personnel, based upon the strength and the weakness of the offense and how they line up and where the tight ends go. You see Elijah Wright, number eight, switching back and forth before this snap on the East Surrey defense. First and 10 for Tarboro at the 24. Staten gets the football up the middle, and he'll gain three yards on first down. We asked Tarboro head coach Steve Craddock about his quarterback, Kamani McDaniels. He said the biggest smile in the room, he's lighted up this offense, and we're seeing maturity from the senior QB. Yeah, he says he's so much fun to be around. The guy who's smiling all the time, has a great attitude, and Jeff Craddock said, he said, this is a guy that I I'm going to miss next year. Just the type of, just emotion he brings to the offense. But he says, when he gets on the field, he's a different person. Jeff Craddock trying to continue what has been an undefeated season for the Tarboro Vikings, trailing by seven late in this first quarter. McDaniels gives to Johnson. Oh, actually, he keeps it. Now inside the 15. McDaniels cuts across the middle. McDaniels into the end zone. And here comes Tarboro on the ground. 21-yard touchdown for Kamani McDaniels. That was special. That was a special run there. Tristan Harless looked like he had him in the C-gap. And he just kind of shook him a little bit and got away from him and got up the field for six. Boy, Kamani McDaniels here. We're seeing why he's the engine that makes this Tarboro T run so far tonight. The deception so on point for Tarboro. 21-yard rushing touchdown, an extra point on the way. Good pressure on that near side, trying to block the kick for East Surrey. That was Gosnell, but the kick is up and good. We are tied at 14 as McDaniels goes 21 yards. And we have a new ball game, all squared at 14. See right there up the middle. See all that deception. You think he hands it off to the fullback, but he doesn't. It's all about eye discipline for the defense. And Kamani McDaniels, it looks like, as you see the different angle here up the middle, looks like he hands it off to the fullback. Benji Gosnell, excuse me, the fullback doesn't, and it gets up the field for six. I mean, it's just something that you can't teach, Evan. That's just something that, you know, kind of innate. Fifth rushing touchdown of the year for the Tarboro quarterback. A former fullback and running back in this Tarboro T offense that has actually proliferated all the way down from the middle school ranks. They learned this offense at a young age in Tarboro, and over the last 10 years, it's developed up to the high school ranks, and we're seeing that fruit bear its biggest seed here tonight in the championship game. Yes, I can't tell you how important it is when you start a program and what the kids are learning at a peewee level when they're in sixth and seventh grade, and they carry that through 12th grade. It's unbelievable the repetitions you get just by carrying that out shows why, you know, they've won 44 games in a row, which was fifth in the country, fourth or fifth in the country. And for more, we go down to Chris. Guys, down on the field, it's very fascinating to me in that you're seeing two different teams in 
Tarboro's speed looks like that's going to be a big problem here for the rest of the night. Now, what East Surrey's been able to do with the zone defense that Tarboro's been playing most of the night, that's where they've been successful. So if Tarboro can get some stops, it's going to be very interesting to see how things progress here because I think the speed for Tarboro is going to make a big difference the rest of the night. 14 apiece here in the final minute of this first half. A low kickoff is a live ball, and forced to jump on it is Steven Gosnell. The senior lays on for dear life, and at the 23-yard line, he's Surrey back to work offensively. Jefferson Boaz has been fantastic, matching his number six. Seven for seven passing, 150 yards, and he found Gosnell for the last touchdown of 41 yards. This quarterback. Right now, Peter, with the two touchdowns tonight, he has 60 passing touchdowns. Amazing. That is third in the country. It's amazing. It's amazing. This More than five-star recruit across all of the USA. Boaz goes to work over the middle. Catch is made. Stevens breaks the tackle. Past the 30. Gets a block. And out in front to the 43-yard line. A flag is down as well as Gosnell moves the chains after a gain of 21. We're going to get another 15 tacked on to the end of this one. Big, big play. Good job by Jefferson Boaz and finding the middle of that zone. And there was just a curl route ball. to the middle First of the field. Of all, they hit out of bounds on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Steven Gosnell has been busy at making men miss on this play. You see here Jefferson Boaz just looking down. Is right in the middle. There is Gosnell. Breaking tackles, getting to the outside. Knew he had a block to the outside boundary. That's the thing. You know where your players are. You understand leverage control, and you get to the outside boundary and pick up another 15 with a late hit outside. Micah Taylor commits the penalty. It's the first penalty for Tarboro tonight. It's a Riddle and Brantley first down. Boaz back to work. Boaz scrambles, throws on the move. Nice catch across his body. And able to move the chains with that conversion. Here comes another receiver, Kyler Jessup, with a first down catch. Nice catch by Jessup. Even better negotiating the pocket by Jefferson Boaz. The senior quarterback showed his prowess there. The Vikings were in a stunt. So where the stunting defensive tackle vacated, he saw the opening, stepped up exactly in the area he vacated, and fired a missile for the first down. Here's a handoff to Elijah Wright. Wright gets a couple of yards before being knocked down by Massenburg. And I want to clear up that last catch was from Benji Gosnell. Also related to Steven. Those two have been fantastic today. And for Tarboro defensively, Micah Taylor and crew trying to slow down this passing attack. It's tough. It's tough. And they're still only sending three. Now they got four linemen up front there looking to put pressure on Boaz in an empty set. Andrew Harding, the defensive coordinator, has a lot to evaluate right now as Boaz scrambles, gets to the sideline, runs up the field, and out of bounds past the sticks goes Jefferson Boaz to the 20-yard line. And don't let the 6'8 frame fool you. He can also run, Evan. He has 16 touchdowns on the year coming into tonight with 466 yards. So he can run with the football, no question. Did you see Boaz looking down the field, knowing nothing's there. He felt the pocket collapse as he rolls to the far side, evades the defender, gets up the boundary, know where the sticks are, and gets out of bounds. Great veteran move by the senior. After the run by Boaz, we have a man down for Tarboro with the injury timeout. Final 14 seconds of this first quarter. Jeff Craddock, the head coach, for Tarboro. He knows how difficult this rematch can be. It reminded him of a match that Tarboro had back in 2005, 2006, right. playing the same team twice at a state final. And he knows East Surrey was going to come out swinging tonight. Well, he did. And even last year's game, we talked about it in the onset, where it was 14 10 at halftime. Tarboro was up by four points. And then it came apart in the second half for East Surrey. It was a fake punt that Jeff Craddock called that resulted in a touchdown for Tarbo, kind of got them going a little more. And, you know, it's kind of working out the same way, 14-14 here. Uh, and it's just a terrific football game, but we expected that. That's Javias Massenburg, the three-year starter down, trying to stop Boaz on that last scramble out of the pocket. So we hope Massenburg's all right as he gets some help from his training staff back to his feet. It has been an offensive 
showcase here in this first quarter. Really has. And he'd be a big loss, Javias Massenburg, 6'3", two and a quarter senior. Coming into tonight with 37 tackles, kind of owns that edge for the Viking defense. We'll let you know when we get the latest on Massenburg, but right now he's being treated by his training staff at Tarboro. Jeff Craddock down a key piece on his defensive line, trying to stop the leading passer in all of North Carolina, Jefferson Boaz, who, by the way, hasn't missed a target tonight. He's nine for nine. Boaz keeps it himself, spins out of one tackler, and that's about it. Down on the line of scrimmage goes Jefferson Boaz, and the first man in there to make the stop is Damian Massenburg. Second and ten coming up. That ends the first quarter here at Wallace Wade Stadium. When we come back, quarter number two here at the 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. All tied at 14 here in Durham. When was the last time you felt free? It's time to uncover that feeling again with the compassion of a cross and shield widely accepted by doctors and specialists and the power of a card that opens doors in all 50 states giving you the freedom to love to dream to dance like no one is watching blue cross and blue shield of north carolina live fearless for winning the 2019 UHC and NPHC Turkey Bowl. In 100 counties in North Carolina, we have over 800 agents. We are within the communities, and our job is to help you. It's just not just a business relationship. It's North Carolina Farm Bureau Nature. Helping you is what we do best. There's Trent Lohman and his East Surrey offense as we start this second quarter of the 1AA State Championship game presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. The East Surrey Cardinals, 18 seniors on this roster, remembering oh so well their 50-10 loss against Tarboro in last year's title game. Now Jefferson Boaz back to work. Boaz has time. Slings it over the middle, and that is his first incompletion of the day, searching for Landon Stevens in the end zone. And there were a plethora of receivers open on that one. He, he looked down the barrel at Stevens for sure. That was his number one, number one progression. He thought he had it. You see him right there in the replay hitting his knees and his helmet. And he knew he had it just a little off target. Boaz was targeting Cameron Powell, the leading rusher for Tarboro as well, also starting at the cornerback position. So a rare third and 10 for East Surrey. Ball at the 20 yard line into the red zone. Boaz with time in the pocket. That is incomplete in between a couple of would-be receivers. And now a decision to be had if you're East Surrey. Here comes the field goal team out. Boaz says he wants to go for it. And it looks like the special teams unit is on the way. Yeah. Yeah, smart, smart call here by head coach Trent Lohman for sure. Is this one of the best kickers in the country in terms of PATs? He's 102 of 106, so he's had, obviously had his reps from a kicking standpoint, just not at this distance. Just to set the table, Derek Sutterby this season, he has only attempted one field goal. He's made it. Now a big one from 37 yards. That's a low kick, and that ball is no good. Wide left. 
What pressure by Clay Craddock, the son of the head coach, getting in on the kick. And we remains tied at 14. Well, that's a huge stop. As you see Clay Craddock walking off the field, obviously enthused. They bent, but they didn't break on that possession. As Boaz took him down the field, you see the kick here, just wide left. As Derek Sutterby gets into it, sometimes you try to put too much leg into it, and you swing that okay. leg through ahead of time, and Clay Craddock, the son of head coach Jeff Craddock, is pumped. Tarboro with the football after the missed kick. And the first handoff goes nowhere, bouncing off defenders. Hard heard running there, but nothing to show for it for Tobias Joyner. And for more, we go down to Chris Hooks. Yeah, guys, you saw Massenberg, Javias Massenberg. He had heard a couple of series ago. He just basically got the win knocked out of him. He's back in just fine. He should be ready to go the rest of the game. That's a huge piece of this defense for Tarboro. Now can the offense take advantage? You see Massenberg, number 11, also out there as a blocking tight end. A huge piece of this Tarboro T rushing attack. McDaniels gives it right to Staten. He sneaks through a tackle. The ball is fumbled. Scooped up by Gosnell. Oh, no, it's scooped up by East Surrey. Hoyt Bullington, the middle linebacker. And Bullington, the leading tackler, gets the football. Guy that leads by example, eyes up, flowing to the football. He's there when the opportunity, as you see, Khalil Staten gets to the outside, tries to come back inside. The ball is stripped out from behind. And there is old faithful Hoyt Bullington to pull it in. Big turnover, sudden change for the offense right back on the field. Bullington had 21 tackles when these teams met last year in the final. And now what a response by East Surrey after the missed field goal from 37. They get the ball right back. Boaz and company from the 14-yard line. Jefferson looking left. Slings it outside, and that ball just out of the hands of his intended target. Second incompletion for Jefferson Boaz today, and he was searching for Stevens. A few incompletions in a row now for Jefferson Boaz. He negotiates the pocket well, though. He saw the defender in front of him, the defensive end, cut down to the inside, opening the outside for him and giving him a passing lane. So what I see so far from Jefferson Boaz, he's able to move his feet depending upon what the defensive line is doing and how the offense is creating the pocket for him. All tied at 14, one minute into the second quarter. Boaz trying to take the lead. Tunnel screen underneath. Catch made by Gosnell and a great open field tackle. Big number 50 on this defense. Christian Harrison makes the stop. Barnes in there as well. And tell you what, with Kadavian Barnes, what he does, Evan, there on that play is when you feel a screen as a defensive lineman, you stop your rush in your tracks if your offensive lineman lets you go too, go too quickly. That's what happened on that play, and that's why he made such a great play. Boaz feeds it off to right. Elijah cuts to the outside, trying to get to the corner, and a great stop on the near sideline. That's Cameron Powell in on the tackle. Nice job on the outside by Powell. Getting to the edge, as you see the handoff from the gun. Nothing was there from the inside, and Wright spins to the outside to the near side boundary, and then the pursuing defenders led there by number three, Cameron Powell, for the tackle. They're going for it. East Surrey went for the field goal last time. This turn they go for. Boaz slings, catches made. Gosnell spins inside the five, and he's got the first down. A huge pitch and catch from Boaz to Gosnell. That's a Riddle and Brantley first down. Injured in an accident. Call Riddle and Brantley today when justice counts. And I'll tell you what, Evan, that throw was decided upon before Gosnell even turned around. That's the timing we talked about with, between these seniors. First and goal from the three. Bubba's under center for the first time today. Feeds it to his fullback, Gosnell. And he'll gain one up the middle. And for more, Chris Hooks. Guys, when we talked to the coach, Bo, uh, coach this week, Coach Loman this week, he talked about the composure and the leadership that Boaz has shown this year. And it's because he's done so much work to have that confidence. And you can certainly see it out there. He is not getting too worked up on anything. He, when pressure's coming in his face, he's not having a problem. And that's why this offense has been so successful this year. The play clock ticks down to 10 as Boaz 
And the East Surrey Cardinals try to take the lead early in the second quarter. Second and goal. Boaz gives to his fullback. And no room to run for number six, Benji Gosnell. What a stop by this Tarboro defense setting up third and goal. Micah Taylor, number 17, you see him walking back to the huddle, does a good job of staying low, making the tackle in the hole. You see his handed off right there to the fullback. And there he is, staying low. Micah Taylor, perfect textbook tackle, shoulders low, helmet up, keep your legs driving into the ground, third down for East Surrey. Taylor and Javarius Silver in on the stop. And now a third and goal from the one. We have a whistle and a timeout called before the snap. Tarboro uses a timeout. That's their first of this second quarter. And Jeff Craddock wanted to talk it over with his 4-4-3 defense that forced a field goal attempt on the last drive. Timeout. And a similar Trouble. stop with a big first moment here on timeout. third and goal. Well, a huge moment. And this Tarboro defense has only given up 14 points once all year long. If East Surrey is able to score in this drive. It will be the most points that this Tarboro Vikings team has given up in one game the entire season. So they are being tested right now for certain. Before this third and goal reminder, we'll have a special interview with Q Tucker, the commissioner of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, coming up on our Hardy's halftime report. Plus, first half stats and highlights and much more here from Wallace Wade Stadium at Duke. All tied at 14. The Tarboro Vikings trying to preserve a 44-game win streak. And East Surrey, the Cardinals feel like they're ready to play spoiler this year after losing last season 50-10 in this same state matchup, the 1AA state finals. This time around, East Surrey has struck first and often. Now knocking on the door, a third and goal from the one is senior quarterback Jefferson Boaz goes under center. His lone tailback is Steven Gosnell. Boaz, the QB sneak, dives forward for the end zone. East Surrey thinks they're in, but ruled short. A fourth and goal coming up as East Surrey stays on the field offensively. A good defense there. Everybody in there, number 11. It's Boaz trying to stick it out, but number 11 for Tarbro getting in there. Javias Massenberg, and right before that play, he was limping back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth and goal. Boaz again. The 6'8 senior piles forward. He is in. Touchdown, Jefferson Boaz. And East Surrey jumps back in front. Getting right behind his center, 6'1", 265, Victor Flores to lead him into the end zone. That's Jefferson Boaz's 17th rushing touchdown of the year. It's just plain old football there, Evan. Just get your shoulders low. As you see right here on the replay, right behind his center in his guard, Evan Morris, to get into the end zone. Two passing touchdowns and a rushing score for Jefferson Boaz today. Here's the extra point on the way. With some pressure in his face, that kick is drilled by Derek Sutterby. And East Surrey is back in front. A one-yard rushing score puts the Cardinals in front by seven. Here on the 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 200,000 participants here in North Carolina who take part in high school sports. Hotel accommodations across North Carolina. Seven is the lucky number for Jefferson Boaz. 77 touchdowns this year combined through the air and on the ground. It's the one yard rushing touchdown that puts East Surrey back in front midway through the second quarter of the 1AA State Championship presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. 
neither team has made much of a stop defensively right. today. It's been a turnover, the key difference. East Surrey with a fumble recovery by Hoyt Bullington, setting up their short touchdown drive of just 20 yards. And now Tarboro gets the football right back. McDaniels, the quarterback, on the kick return. Looking to get to the sideline on the near side, and McDaniels walks out of bounds. Here comes Tarboro from their 14-yard line. Worst field position of the day, but an offense that was stopped on the last drive. You see right here Isaac Washington getting in there, the defensive tackle, stripping it, allowing Hoyt Bullington to get that recovery. Huge turnover. As you look at Isaac Washington there, the junior targeted by Clemson, North Carolina State, and UNC, among others. This is a guy they call the man-child, and he showed it there with that big turnover to give his ball back, to, to give the ball back to the offense. Only the 10th turnover that Tarboro has committed all season. This is in a long campaign of 14 in those start for the Tarboro Vikings looking to extend a 44-game win streak. McDaniels back under center here on first and 10. Nice room to operate. Powell cuts inside. Big running room for Cameron Powell. He's out past the 40. That's a start to a drive to the 41. There's no better way to respond to his scores to get a big play on first down as the clock still runs and the Vikings get right back on the line of scrimmage. That's a riddle and Brantley first down moving the chains. Here's a huge hole. Breaking open Travis Johnson. Johnson streaks down the hash marks and into the end zone. What a response for Tarboro. Two plays. They march down the field. And an extra point away from tying this up. And I don't think many people thought that Johnson was going to get the ball, and they came right back on the football. And you can see here, the defense wasn't even ready. They weren't even set. The offense knew it. They snapped the ball quick, got it right handed off right up the middle to Travis Johnson for the huge score. And we are almost, we're 21 to 20 with the, with the extra point pending. Travis Johnson, 59 yards, wow. streaking down the field. His longest run of the season was 60 yards, but maybe his most important here tonight. There's the extra point to tie it. And that kick was almost blocked, but it sneaks through. And now we go to Brick. Leighton Dupree ties it up, but Johnson caps off a two-play scoring drive, 86 yards, and we are even at 21. More from the 1AA State Championship presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield coming up next. Travis Johnson breaks this game open with a 59-yard rushing touchdown, his 12th score of the year. We're now tied at 21 in the 1AA State Championship game presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. The rematch has lived up to the billing here in half number one alongside Peter Montemurno. Chris Hooks down on the field. Evan Budrovich with you tonight. Tarboro can certainly run the football, and they have done it at ease in this matchup. 219 yards rushing. The Vikings know they're playing their style of football. They sure are. And everybody in East Surrey knew that it was like, we, we're not going to be able to stop them. We just got to hope we can contain them. Easier said than done. Yeah, no, no doubt about that, partner. Leighton Dupree to kick this ball off. A low angling kick scooped up by Quincy Smith. And Smith out across the 35 as East Surrey 
comes back with the football. How about Tarboro going right down the field in two plays? No, it's a great coaching job. I call him the no huddle because the defense wasn't even set. You can see right here, no one's set and they snap the ball and they hand it right off to Johnson. And the defensive line has to be set. If they're not, if they're out of position, the offensive lineman's gonna get leverage. And you see Johnson going into the end zone untouched. Great job by Jeff Craddock to get the no huddle at the right time. Two of the top scoring teams in all of one AA football. They combined to average 100 points. We're getting close to 50 points, partner, here early in the second quarter. Boaz slings it out right over the head of his target, trying a tunnel screen. That's now three straight incompletions for Jefferson Boaz. Now he didn't set his feet there. He kind of threw off his back foot and the ball sailed on him a little bit. Wasn't able to step into the throw. Really wasn't any pressure on him. Just wanted to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Trying to find his target, Kyler Jessup, the senior, number two. Second and 10 for East Surrey. Boaz with time. Goes to the near sideline. Good catch by Gosnell. And Benji Gosnell out to midfield. He was marked down. There was a whistle. So at the midfield mark, uh, Benji Gosnell goes out for 13. And Micah Taylor for the Vikings was in great coverage. As you see here, Boaz looks off his one progression, fires it right into that curl zone. And Micah Taylor is right there to make the tackle. But a great throw and a fast, quick throw by Boaz. That's a Riddle and Brantley first down, moving the chains to midfield. Boaz down the near sideline, a jump ball and knocked away. Great coverage by Cameron Powell, slowing down the aggressive speedster in Dylan Mosley. Dylan Mosley, as you see here, Boaz looks one way, comes back the other way, holds the safety with his eyes. And Mosley almost had to play defender there, knocking that ball away as over the top was Pe Cameron Powell coming, looking for a center field interception. Second and 10 for East Surrey. They have scored on three of their four drives tonight. Elijah Wright sneaks up the middle. Now we go down to Chris Hooks for more. You guys, you talked about Dylan Mosley. He's going to go to NC State as a preferred walk-on, just like captain on the defense for Tarboro, Clay Craddock. And guess what? They're going to be roommates. They actually met at NC State during a recruiting visit, and they decided to strike up a conversation. And, well, after this game, they're going to be best friends. <laughs> Enemies for, six, for 48 minutes and best friends for life in college as Boaz looks to throw. A pump fake as he moves out of the pocket. Boaz showing off that speed, and he finds his friendly target. That is Steven Gosnell out to the 37, and a first down for East Surrey. Well, that's the one thing that Jefferson Boaz does really well, is that even when he's under pressure and the pocket collapses a little bit, when he's rolling out of the pocket, he keeps his eyes down the field, as you'll see here to the left side of your screen. He gets to the near side boundary, comes back to the middle of the field, dangerous throw, but he knows where his receivers are on the football field. Great job by the senior. Jefferson Boaz, no over 200 yards passing. He flips it out to the far side. That's a forward pass and incomplete, searching for Gosnell. Clay Craddock, he wanted the turnover. He got to like the effort defensively, but second and 10 coming up. Well, the one thing that you notice here, Evan, so far, everybody's flying around the field. I mean, the defense is flying around for the Vikings. East Surrey, you see what they're doing, getting up the football field. This is a high intensity, it's an intense game, and you can see the tenacity on both sides of the football. Jefferson Boaz during this playoff run, eight touchdowns to so only two interceptions. He averages 300 yards passing in the playoffs. And the pressure of DeQuavian Barnes trying to get after this quarterback is a timeout call by Trent Lohman. And he's certainly going to talk it over before the second and 10. 526 to go in the half. Second charge, timeout. A reminder, fans, stick around for the fourth quarter. We'll be selecting the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina play of the game. Be bold, be confident, live fearless. And that motto certainly speaks true to what Jefferson Boaz and this passing attack have done. 212 yards and two touchdowns through the air for the UNC commit. I mean, he, he is uh, something special. And Mac Brown, the head coach of the Tar Heels, has a special player coming to him next year. And I mean, if, look at him, 6'8", 230 pounds. And, I mean, if you put a, he can walk out of any NFL tunnel on tomorrow and look like he belongs. That's the type of physical stature that Jefferson Boaz brings with him. 
is part of his whole arsenal. And Peter, what a difference one year makes. Boaz got the start in last year's title game. He only passed for 123 yards and no touchdowns, and today he looked untouchable in that first quarter. Yeah, it's, it's something he's been waiting for again. This entire team has been waiting for for a year. Setting up a tie ball game midway through the second quarter. Boaz with five receivers on the field for the second and ten. Boaz slings it over the middle, catch of the 30. Now inside the 25 and still moving. That's Landon Stevens inching closer to the red zone with a nice pitch and catch of 17. Not a lot of pressure put on Boaz there. And I'll tell you what, these receivers run, run great routes. They know where the zones are as they did blitz there. Great blitz pick up in the middle, as you see by the center. And then there is Landon Stevens. And that's the thing, if, if Boaz reads the blitz, Great job by the center, Victor Flores picking it up. He knows where the hot read is right away. Boaz going out of this empty set for much of this drive. Now looks for the end zone, and he's got a man. That is Gosnell with the touchdown. And he's Surrey back in front on the 20-yard pitch and catch. That ball was thrown on a rope, a frozen rope. He had time to step into the throw, zinged it right into one of his top receivers for six. You see it right here. He looks off his first progression back over to the, I mean, that's the thing. He throws it to his spot and the receivers go and get it. And one of the, the receivers there is, is one of his favorites, Gosnell, for the touchdown. Second touchdown of the night for Steven Gosnell. Here comes the extra point for East Surrey. Make it 28 to 21. The most points Tarboro has given up all season and it comes here in the 1AA state title game. As you see right there, just standing in the pocket with authority, with poise, and he fires it into an area that he knew Steven Gosnell, Gosnell would be at. Great protection. They only rushed three defenders. They had a spy on the outside, drop back in zone, and there he is for six. 22 touchdowns on the season for Steven Gosnell who so far on the year has been fantastic. Top five in North Carolina in receiving yards and in touchdowns, led by their do-it-all quarterback, Jefferson Boaz. We were wondering what style of play would win, running the ball or passing it, and it's been punch for punch here in it, the first it's half. It's coming down to, Evan, it's like who's going to make the next mistake or who's going to have the ball the last in this football game, the way it's playing out. If you're a fan of high-scoring offense, you've come to the right place. We had one double-A state championship game alongside my friend Peter Montemurno, Chris Hooks on the sideline as well. Evan Budjovic with you tonight. Offense on full display here in the one double-A state title game. Derek Sutter be to kick this ball off. He missed a field goal earlier tonight. Eventually set up a fumble and a touchdown yeah. later for East Surrey, but that could play a factor in the second half. Yeah, that's one of those things you say, file that one away for later in the game. Missed it from 37 yards, wide left. Now he's set to boot this ball away. Sutterby leads the nation in extra points. He's four for four tonight. And away we go. Returnable kick as McDaniels has it inside his five. Cutting across the field. McDaniels has a block. Slips a tackle and the ball is loose. East Surrey thinks they have it. Waiting for a rolling on the field with the fumble on the play. And it's East Surrey football. Another sudden change. They call that a sudden change. Offense comes off the field. They think the defense is going out. Now they have to be prepared, get right back on the football field. Number 30, Evan McCreary somehow comes on top of the scrum. Poked loose by number 15, Jeremy Gibson, and a second fumble recovered by East Surrey. Well, that's what you want your kickoff team to do, to play with reckless abandon. A lot of guys on the kickoff team aren't playing on the starting offense or defense. Another five receiver set for Boaz. Jefferson overshoots his target in Stevens, and that could have been picked off by Craddock. How about this fumble recovery by East Surrey? I mean, it's something else. The kickoff team running in their lanes, and you see McDaniels get in there and just kind of had that ball exposed a little bit and knocked out there by number 15. Yeah, Gibson with the fumble poked loose and then recovered by McCreary. That's two fumbles for Tarboro. They'd only given it up nine times all season and twice tonight. Boaz back to work on a second and 10 after missing Stevens. 
right on the inside handoff, and he goes nowhere. I think number 60 in on the tackle for this defense. That's to Quavian Barnes, the senior with the stop. The Cardinals offense haven't done a lot on the run tonight. They haven't had to, but when they ran, when they have run the ball, Kadavian Barnes and his stout defensive line have really taken away the middle of the football field of the running game for the Cardinals. Kadavian Barnes part of a defense with all 11 players on the all-conference team this past season. They'll give up 41 points all year. Here's the tunnel screen to Gosnell. Inside the 25 and down to the 20, a first down for Steven Gosnell over the chains after picking up 13. That's a riddle and Brantley first down. Well, you live by the blitz and you die by the blitz and the Cardinals caught the Vikings blitzing to the near side. You see right here and Boaz gets it right out of his hands to Gonsol and there was nobody there because that side the linebackers were rushing so he had an easy tunnel to get a first down. Now in the red zone, Boaz steps up on the pocket, slings across his chest, passes knocked up in the air, and there's a flag. Might be in the range of pass interference with Cameron Powell in coverage. They were searching for Gosnell on the end zone strike, and a big ruling coming up in the end zone. And they both went up for the football, and that flag would tell me that the defender hit his back for that ball arrived. Pass in the first, defense. Half a distance to the goal. First down. First a down. crucial first penalty down. sets up first and goal for East Surrey. Just the second penalty of the night for Tarbro. That's a big one on Cameron Powell. That's a huge one again. You see the replay here. Both defenders are going up at the same time, and it looks like Cameron Powell just gets in there just a hair, you see a closer angle right here. Yeah, he hits his back before the ball arrives. So bang, bang play, but the right call. Boaz back to work, slings for the end zone and finds a man. Open for the touchdown is Kyler Jessup. And East Surrey's putting on a show offensively here in the first half. Turnover is a big part of any football game and two big turnovers have turned into 13, possibly 14 points for the Cardinals. Boaz does a great job, knows where Jessup's going to be right in the corner of the front side of the end zone for another touchdown pass by Jefferson Boaz. We're seeing something special here tonight, folks. We talk about this trio of receivers. Well, Jessup's number four. It's his first touchdown catch of the season, and what better time to do it than the state championship game. East Surrey now up by two touchdowns on this beautiful 10-yard strike. See, why well, you love to see Boaz. He looks off to your right side of the screen. There Jessup is, knowing exactly where he's going to be. Did Jefferson Boaz knew exactly where Jessup was going to be and throws it in an area where he can only catch it, and he gets up. He's pumped. Throws that ball to the ref and starts celebrating with his teammates. Sixth straight game with a catch for Kyler Jessup, and that's touchdown number one for the senior wideout. This is an 18-man senior class for East Surrey. So motivated by last year's 50-10 to 10 loss, and we're seeing it here at half number one. This, this is something. This is something. I think we talked about it. We watched the film, Evan. We talked all week with both coaches. Uh, we knew this wasn't going to be a game like last year. In rematches, and there have been a couple here in the last decade, including in the 1AA division in 2004 and 2005. It has been the team that's lost in year one, come back to win in year two. A lot to be told in this game, but we're seeing it unfold so far with three and a half minutes to go in half number one. Tarboro gets the football back, and they will have the ball to start the second half. Something to keep an eye on as Jeff Craddock's club goes back to work following this kickoff. And that's what Coach Trent Lohman of the Cardinals said. He said this week, in 2008, they learned what it took to get to this game, and they learned what it took to win it. And that's, a, that's an interesting quote because they learned they had to be in this game. They had to lose like that in order to know how to win a game like this. East Surrey searching for their first ever state title. Tarboro has won six titles, including two straight. Here's a squib kick, a returnable ball, and a nice escape past the 25. Still churning his legs is Micah Taylor, and the whistles blow him dead. As Tarboro now gets the football. We're going to spot it at the 37-yard line. And a first and 10 for the Tarboro T. This rushing attack that has picked up 219 yards on the ground. And again, coming into tonight's game, we talked about it. The Vikings only gave up 14 points this year in one game. 
They gave up an average of two points all year long in each game. Tonight, 35 has been dropped on them before with three minutes to go in the first half. Incredible. Tarboro searching for an answer and also trying to hold on to the football. Two fumbles tonight in this first half. Both have been lost. McDaniels gave away one fumble on special teams. He's under center for this snap. McDaniels on the keeper, cuts left, looking to get outside and nowhere to go for Kamani McDaniels. Nice stop by big number one, Quincy Smith, and some help along the way with Luke Bullington on the tackle. You see here in the replay, and Kwame McDaniels hiding that ball, trying to get to the outside, but too many defenders there for the Cardinals. Unbelievable job on the inside, and Luke Bullington bringing him down on the outside. And you look at Quincy Smith, one of the guys in there to make the play, and the senior leading this defense. Good job in the outside perimeter. East Surrey gave up 300 yards rushing in last year's title game. They may have given up yards, but they've been holding their own here tonight. Powell goes in motion, gets the football, stretching it outside, beats Washington to the corner. Now up the sideline goes Powell, and he's short of the sticks, but a nice run out to the 45. And a third and short coming up for Tarboro. Because they have so much speed to the outside, that's, that's something they should probably continue to go to to number three, get Powell to the outside right away instead of the, some time is wasted when you have that pirouette in the backfield with the quarterback. You got, these guys are not staying, not getting, uh, staying on blocks, the offensive line, the defensive line are getting off. So get that ball in the Powell's hands right away. Movement at the line, and I think East Surrey jumped offside before this snap. That would result in a first down. Crucial call here coming up from our white hat. Third ball, encroachment, yep. defense, five yards. That's enough for a first down. Just the second penalty for East Surrey, and here's the movement. You see Casey Torres who's right over the ball. Sometimes, you know, when they're going on the same cadence throughout the game, a lot of defensive linemen like to get greedy, and they think it's going to happen. you got to wait till that ball is moved before you even breathe. So Torres moves before the snap, but a first down for Tarboro. McDaniels on the keeper. McDaniels rolls to the sideline, and he's forced out of bounds. Nice pressure there from East Surrey's defense in Hoyt Bullington, the middle linebacker. Clock to stop with 2.26 to go before the half. Two timeouts for Tarboro. And the Cardinals are being aggressive on the outside with their corners. They are, their corners are flying up the field, and they're maintaining their, they're maintaining their contain and Ty Needham did a great job, number 20, in that last play, flying up the field and forcing everything underneath for Kamani McDaniels to run to. McDaniels, the two-year starter at the quarterback position, trying to execute a comeback late in this half. Inside handoff and tripped up at the line of scrimmage. What a tackle. Hoyt Bullington trips down Khalil Staten, and now it's a third and ten for Tarboro. Boy, Bullington, just, uh, I mean, coming into tonight, 92 tackles. It's another one where Coach Trent Lohman said, you know, he's he's a quiet guy, not real flashy, he doesn't speak him unless he needs to. You see another leader on the field right there for the Cardinals, Elijah Wright, this senior. A lot of seniors, as you're seeing, Evan. This is, you know, nine returning starters on offense, six returning on defense. Look how many players East Surrey stacks on the line before this snap. McDaniels cuts to his right, and only a couple yards to go. So a fourth and six coming up for Tarboro. Big decision with a minute and a half left in this first half. See the punter coming out for Tarboro. Surprised East Surrey may not use a timeout here as well to preserve some clock. Right. But knowing Tarboro gets the football back in half number two, it creates a unique situation here with the ball near midfield. With this punter, makes sense to punt here as he averages 33 yards. He's gotten five this year inside the 20. So with a minute and change left, and you're right, partner, right? you'd think that they'd want to call a timeout. To, and they do, as, as Coach Craddock does. Let's see what they're going to do here. They had the punter out, but they called the timeout with 59 seconds left. A reminder, fans, stick around for the Hardy's halftime report. We'll have a special interview with Q Tucker, commissioner of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. 
first half highlights and thoughts from the leading coach at halftime here at Wallace Wade Stadium. That's coming up on the Hardys halftime report. Jeff Craddock in unfamiliar territory. The last time his team gave up 35 points was in the regional final in 2016 to Wallace Rose Hill. And his club's in a tough spot down 14 late in this half. Yeah, they sure are. And, and he knew that he was going to be facing a dominant offense. Best team they faced all year. Best offense they faced in quite some time. And hey, this game is not over. They're going to this is this is why they've won 44 in a row, because they know how to make adjustments when they need to. And sometimes you need a halftime to kind of collect yourselves, talk with the coaches, talk with the players, and get back to where you need to get. Electing the timeout, it's a fourth and six. The offense is back on the field now for Tarboro. It's a crucial six yards for the Vikings. And now Trent Lohman gets a look. He'll call a timeout. And East Surrey uses their final timeout to scout out what Tarboro had in store. The chess match continues. For sure. Jeff Craddock was telling us coming into the week, he had been watching East Surrey film from week one of the season. Yeah. Trent Lohman said the same thing. And these two teams, it was sort of destiny they'd face each other here in this final. I think they knew. I think they knew it. Both coaches talked about it, that they knew it was going to be, if they're going to play them again, it's going to be right here in this game on this day. And they prepared for it ever since. I mean, I know you talk about the regular season and you got to win the win the non-conference, win the conference, and then win the state title. And that's how they broke their season down into three phases. And you know, this was a this was a rallying cry for this Cardinals team that they wanted to get back here, not just to get here, but clearly just to win it as well. This East Surrey team leads North Carolina in scoring, 52 points per game, the top passing team in the country. And the second-ranked scoring team, they put a lot of pressure on Tarboro, trailing by two touchdowns, and the Vikings electing to go for it on fourth and six. McDaniels, the play action. He looks to throw. The jump pass is dropped, trying to target Samaje Petaway, and a fourth down stop for East Surrey. You see the replay here, a little play action and a little jump pass, trying just overthrown a bit. He was able to get separation on the play was Petaway. And it's one of those plays where he wasn't stopped at the line of scrimmage, so he did get separation, but throw wasn't made on point. And you can see the disgust by Petaway on the sideline. Petaway has three catches this year. He might have scored a touchdown if he brings that one in. Yep. Instead, Jefferson Boaz and this dangerous offense have 56 seconds to march down the field. Boaz with time in the pocket. Uncorks the pass and a nice catch. Moving the chains here, number three, Dylan Mosley. And now a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Yep. The a light flag as well. Yeah, the Vikings ran a stunt on their defensive line where the nose guard slanted one way and the tackle Hold looped around him. Offense, 10 yards, remains first down. The Cardinals got caught a little bit there. As you can see right here, number 50 went in the loop around, branded bottoms, and then double team on the inside. That's a tough assignment on Kadavian Barnes trying to slow him down. Very tough. With the pass rush of the first team all-conference defensive lineman. Remember, in high school football, the holding penalty is 10 yards from the spot, so it gets moved right. all the way back to the 31-yard line. Boaz slings a tunnel screen. Catch is made by Jessup. He'll get a lot of those yards back from the holding. Out to the 38. They must get to the Tarboro 44 to move the chains. No timeouts left in the half, so East Surrey has to hustle. Boaz. Looking deep, nice catch underneath of the 40. And laying up right near midfield is Stevens. Five seconds left, this is a third down. Well, there was one second initially. Will they keep the time on the clock? As they tried to spike the football and save a second for one last heave. Right now you see the clock is at triple zeros. Official time is kept on the field. Not on the scoreboard, so they're Please giving them a the second. Please set the game clock to one second. 
What a smart play there by Jefferson Boaz. Yes. yes. Stevens one got seven. down quickly, Thank and you. now he's got one chance with that rocket arm of his. He can get it there. Throwing down the field. The line gives him time. He could sit there, and we saw him in pregame standing right around the 45-yard line of the Vikings, just flicking his wrist, and it was going into the end zone with ease. Off of one foot as That's well right. for the senior quarterback, who has four passing touchdowns tonight. Five receivers for Boaz. Final play of half number one. Jefferson down the far sideline. That pass is knocked away. Excellent coverage by Nas Black. And that ends half number one. Tarboro in a rare position, trailing by two touchdowns as the two-time defending state champions are down by 14 at the half. For more with the leading head coach, Trent Lohman, we have Chris Hooks down on the field. Coach, first half, when according to plan, it looks like you control the controllables. Just what did you see from your side? Our kids are playing hard right now. That's, that's all. Well, when you look at the second half, last year you were in sort of the same position. This time you're ahead. How do you finish this out? We, we got to finish. We got to play hard. I got a kid down. I, know, I understand that, Coach. Go take care of that. Back to you guys. Well, Chris, a lot on Trent Lohman's mind right now. He's trying to keep an eye on that receiver. Looking to make the catch nonetheless. We'll see here as Stevens came out a bit awkwardly after this play. Yeah, Landon Stevens was writhing in pain there at the end. You see some of the highlights here of the first half. Jefferson Boaz punching it in to give East Surrey the lead. And it's the Cardinals up 14 here on the 1AA State Championship presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. to the Hardy's Halftime Report here at the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Welcome back to the Hardy's Halftime Report here at the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Now time for a segment with one of our sponsors in Ingalls. We hope you're enjoying today's broadcast of the North Carolina State High School Football Championships here on My 40. Mark Cady from Friday Night Rivals joined by our good friend Melissa Level from Ingalls Markets, proud supporter of today's broadcast. Always great to see you. Great to see you too. Championships are fun. This is what an exciting time in these young men's lives, in these coaches' lives, in these families' lives. I mean, this is what they've worked for since, I mean, not just since July, a oh. lot of times since they were probably six years old. Little kids playing for the first time in Little League Ball. Yeah, mm -hmm. and today it, it's all on the line for them. We're excited to bring this broadcast to you. Talk about Ingalls. You guys have been a big supporter of high school football through North Carolina, uh, you know, all year long. Talk about why it's so important to Ingalls. Well, it's whether it's on the field or in the classroom. Room. Ingalls likes to be part of the lives within the school environment and and sports are a wonderful way for us to to get our message out but also to show young people that they can be part of their community too. And you talk about uh, somebody such a great part of that community a lot of it of course comes from so many community uh, endeavors you guys do whether it's tools for schools throughout right. the year mm -hmm. we gave away a bunch of money for field goals earlier That's this right. year mm -hmm. which was a lot of big fun for the boys and girls clubs mm -hmm. so many different community things because you're in these communities and a lot of times before the game, after the game, getting ready for the weekend. Absolutely. It, it, Pep Ingles, rallies, everything. Ingles is always the first stop, the right? cheerleaders on them. I mean, we really get involved in the whole daily activity of their lives and their parents' lives. And frankly, it's probably the first place moms or dads stop with their kids in the car on their way home from school every day, right? Right. So that's a fun part about being a part of their family. And that makes us feel part of the community and part of their life. Well, of course, people are watching this broadcast here today on My 40. And a lot of great football action is coming up. Real quick, just talk about some of the great highlights people should get for all their tailgate 
tailgate parties and football parties. Absolutely. Of course, everything from chips and dip and, and soft drinks to wonderful, easy to do meals and sub sandwiches from our deli. Well, there you go. There's so much that Ingalls is a part of your game, a part of your life and a part of your community. And we thank you for being a part of today's broadcast. Thank you. Melissa Lowell from Ingalls Markets right there. It is the North Carolina State High School Football Championships right here on My 40. When we come back, more on the Hardee's Halftime Report. Back to the Hardy's halftime report here in Durham. Now time to check in with the commissioner of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, Miss Q Tucker. I'm here with the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Commissioner Q Tucker. Now, realignment is coming up in 2021. What is that process looking like? Well, we have already met with our realignment committee. That committee was put together in October. We used the names that were recommended by the membership. And then our board of directors went in and uh, gave some recommendations to our president and vice president. And they ultimately put that committee together. Then the committee came in November 14th and just started to lay some groundwork. Uh, we started looking at some data looking at what some possible ways that we can impact uh, realignment process. Uh, should we just look at ADM numbers, which are the enrollment numbers? Mm -hmm. Should we be looking at things like uh, the economic factors? Should we take into account uh, free and reduced lunches? Uh, what else should we look at? Maybe we need to be looking at the playoffs. Uh, obviously, you don't want the playoffs to drive realignment, but obviously that really is uh, important to the membership. So we essentially entertained an amendment uh, request that came from one of the member schools to deal with classification because if we're going to change from four classes we obviously mm -hmm. would need the membership to vote on it so that's really where we are right now busy time as we have the state championships here we're always looking to promote a positive game day atmosphere I know the association has revamped the sportsmanship initiative what changes have you made in order to help achieve a positive atmosphere? We started several years ago, sportsmanship together, we make the right call. And it still involves all of us together. It involves the players, it involves the coaches, it involves the officials, uh, the administrators, and parents in particular. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we still have that as really the umbrella, but then we wanted to take a look at respecting the game. Because ultimately, when you play games, it's, it's just for a moment, really. Uh, it's that moment in time when you play, but you need to have respect for your opponents, respect for the people who are working the game, but then to look beyond that, that you know, get, life is a game, mm -hmm. and we all are playing that game, and so that if we can focus in on that to some extent, then maybe we have a better shot at trying to emphasize sportsmanship and get everybody to really buy in. It might help the nationwide decline in officiating <laughs> if there's a positive atmosphere on the game field. What have you seen the effects of the decline in officiating here in North Carolina athletics? Well, obviously, when you have a decline in the numbers of officials who are participating in your program, then it means there are those times when maybe teams are looking for officials, they can't get them to a contest, our regional supervisors are out beating the bushes. So decline in wanting to even officiate then impacts your numbers. When we look at the average age of our officials across the state of North Carolina, we're at 60 years of age mm -hmm. and so we need younger people wanting to get involved in the program. One thing that could help is if people would respect officiating. If people would, you know, we talk about respecting the game, but if they would respect the fact that these men and women take classes, they take a test, they study, they practice, and uh, just respect that they make a sacrifice and they commit to officiating. You know, obviously and unfortunately, it is a nationwide problem. And so my colleagues across the country, we're all addressing it. Uh, we're trying to do some more recruiting. We need our young people in the high school ranks, particularly seniors, to recognize that officiating may be something that they want to do once they graduate. So if we can get some there, we, we do some things with our college programs, uh, trying to again drive home the point that there is a place for you to officiate in high school athletics. So 
uh, we're doing what we can, but we're always open to suggestions and uh, any ideas that the general public might have. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you very much for having me. When we come back, more from the Hardy's Halftime Report. Welcome back to the Hardy's Halftime Report here in Durham. For our final segment, Kenny Chesney joins us for a quick segment on why football matters in high school athletics. I keep going back to connection and this bond that's formed and how impressionable a young person can be when they put on a pair of shoulder pads and a helmet and they see their buddies in that helmet and shoulder pads. It's something really, really awesome to feel. And to smell the grass and to, to get hit or to hit someone or whatever. It's, it's, it's this feeling that, you ne that never leaves you. But I think for me, the thing about football, why it's so important, is that it just instills this work ethic that I wouldn't have had without it. For me and all my friends, and the area that we grew up in and the team we played on, we had to work for everything we got. Nothing is given to you, and if you want something, you gotta go take it. Highlights and stats coming up after this quick break on the Hardy's Halftime Report. Maxwell, look at deep. time you felt free. It's time to uncover that feeling again with the compassion of a cross and shield, widely accepted by doctors and specialists, and the power of a card that opens doors in all 50 states, giving you the freedom to love, to dream, to dance like no one is watching. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, live fearless. What a beautiful night here in Durham for the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Time to start the second half, but first a look back at a high scoring half number one. The Tarboro Vikings, they only gave up 41 points all season. They've given up 35 so far. What has East Surrey done to move the football down the field? You know, they, they, the air attack has been precision. I mean, Jefferson Boaz and the line is giving him time and he's able to throw the ball, find his receivers. Receivers are running great routes, confusing the entire defense for Tarboro, something that they had to approach at halftime. Staten came right back with a huge rushing touchdown to even this game at seven. And then give credit to East Surrey, trying to slow down McDaniels, who's been tough to stop. His rushing touchdown from 21 yards, tied it up at 14. And then the huge turnover right here. Isaac Washington knocking it out. Bowlington picking it up and getting his team back into the end zone. And then the big run to respond to that was Tarboro. So, and that was a, that was a 61 yard for Johnson. He yep. went right up the middle. And then this dime of a pass finding Gosnell. One of two catches for Gosnell was Boaz threw for four touchdowns. And then the fumbles tell the story late in the half. Well, two fumbles have resulted in 14 points for East Surrey, and you have a two score game right here 35 to 21 could be tied at halftime without those two turnovers passing numbers impressive for east surrey the best passing team in north carolina almost 300 yards but it's the running attack for tarbro's kept him in the game strength versus strength again tonight again the second half adjustments have to be made against this passing attack of east surrey and this is the best quarterback i think i've ever seen in high school play the way the level that he's playing at right now it's time for half number two to check out the stats at our Hardy's halftime report. Tarboro will have the luxury of starting with the football in half number two. And East Surrey to boot the ball away. And we'll go down with Chris Hooks, who had a chance to catch up with Jeff Craddock. And Chris, what did Jeff have to say? Well, Evan, the first thing out of his mouth uh, when I talked to him was, 
Jefferson Boaz is playing lights out, and that's the first thing he said. And he said that he felt like they were going tit for tat with him. They just turned the ball over. He said, we just got to stay together, stay focused. And he felt like that at first they could get pressure with four, but they, and then when they tried to blitz, they found that East Surrey was using uh, the holes there on the curls, and they felt like that they had to go back to that. So they're just, they really don't know how they're going to get to Jefferson Boaz, but they felt like if they stayed together and didn't turn the ball over, this could be a different game in the second half. Thank you, Chris, as Tarville gets a first crack at it in half number two. Their offense has been tough to stop on the ground, averaging over eight yards a carry. Now they must continue that trend here in half number two. And Kamani McDaniels has been the leader of this. Again, we talked about it in the onset that this kid's the engine that controls this Tarver OT, and he's done really well tonight, except for that one turnover. Derek Sutterby with the opening kick. This is caught by Powell. Powell up the far sideline, and he's bumped out of bounds past the 35. As that Tarver OT offense goes back to work, Peter's so fast hitting. Tarboro has blown out teams this year by an average of 40 points. This is the first game all season where a second half has been needed to put a team away. Well, and that's a great point, Evan, because when we spoke to Jeff Craddock this week, he said that most of the time the games are over at halftime, so a lot of their starters have not played a full four quarters. Let's see how that plays out in the second half. McDaniels back to work. He attempted one pass and missed a target on fourth down. He's been part of a rushing attack that's picked up 231 yards on the ground. McDaniels, a misdirection head off to Staten, and he's spun down at the line of scrimmage. Great tackle. Benji Gosnell makes the stop. No gain on the play. And Benji Gosnell knifing in from the inside to take him down on the outside. I mean, just a great job by the defense of East Surrey. Not being fooled by that misdirection on that play. First play coming out of halftime. Benji Gosnell second on this team in tackles with 85 stops. Trying to slow down a rushing attack for Tarboro that averages 300 yards a game on the ground. Second and 10 for McDaniels and company. Misdirection fake goes nowhere and knocked down with a flurry of defenders. First one in on the stop is Hoyt Bullington and the defense corrals for a loss of six. And also in there again, Benji Gonsal again, fighting up the field, keeping everything to the inside, keep your outside shoulder free. You see Benji scraping on the line, going left to right in your screen, and then bringing down the runner, and then everybody else pursuing on the backside, bringing him down. Big start to this half for Benji Gosnell, who Jeff Craddock said is one of the most important defenders on East Surrey's defense, so a high praise from the opposing head coach. Third down. McDaniels scrambling out, looking to throw, heaves up a prayer into East Surrey territory, and it is caught on the deflection. Down to the 25-yard line, Nas Black, a huge turn of field position. Unbelievable play by Tarboro. That was man-to-man -man coverage, hipped up on the outside. You see the replay here, Kamani McDaniels rolling to the far side of the field and just heaves it down the field, jumps in the air, and it was a jump ball. Man, what a catch. That is the longest pass completion of the season Whew. for Tarboro, and it comes in the final game of the season. Man. Second and six as Tarboro works quickly. Staten bumped to the line of scrimmage. He goes backward and is dragged down for a loss on the play. This East Surrey defense, they've been all over the rushing attack here in the second half. Come back to that pass in the previous play. Great cameraing of there. Both players going up, and Ty Needham had a shot at it, but Nas Black, great focus, getting up at the highest point of attack and bringing it down for the reception. Big play for the Vikings. Sixth catch of the year for Nas Black, and what a big one, getting the ball down to the 25. Now it's a third and eight, so a lot of work to do here if you're Tarboro on the first drive of the third quarter. McDaniels under center on third down. McDaniels, quarterback run, cuts to the left, and is stopped short of the first down marker. That's Luke Bullington, the junior on the stop. Fourth down coming up, and they'll need three yards to move the chains. And that was a beautiful play by Luke Bullington. He played on the outside. He was the only source of contain 
He was between the end zone and the football. He played everything to force Kamani back into the inside, played off his block, made a tackle from behind, forcing the fourth down. Luke Bullington has averaged five tackles a game in the playoffs, and what a stop to set up fourth and three. Tarboro into the red zone, trying to move the chains. Powell goes up the middle, right against the sticks, and he's knocked short. What a stop by this East Surrey defense, and they get the stop. Now back into the hands of Jefferson Boaz. Consul in there, Quincy Smith in there. The whole defense seemingly felt like it was in on that play in that fourth down. Big, great job by the defense to bend a little bit on that pass play, but not break, as you see right here. Got Pirouette in the backfield, and what a huge hit in the hole by number 12, Steven Gonsal, to stop the initial point of attack. That Gosnell combination has been outstanding in this second half, and now into the hands of Boaz, who has four touchdowns through the air and one on the ground. Wright gets the handoff to start half number two, and he's spun back for a huge loss. That is number 50 on the stop. Nice job by Christian Harrison on the tackle. That's why they call Christian Harrison the train for plays like that. As you see here on the replay, handed off to Elijah getting through the front and nothing doing on the backside because of Christian Harrison. Christian Harrison, first team all-conference this past season on the defensive line in the Coastal Plains 1A Conference. Second and 10 for Boaz. Jefferson flings it to the far sideline and it's caught at the sticks right at the first down marker. That's Dylan Mosley. Pitch and catch of 10. And for more on the Tarboro defense, we go down to Chris Hooks. Guys, you talk about Christian Harrison. He is someone, somewhat of an average player as a freshman. And then he had a little bit of adversity himself. He was ineligible his sophomore year. He didn't pout. He didn't sulk. He actually was the manager of the varsity football team throughout that year, kept working out. And Coach Craddock said he used that situation as something to propel him forward. He got his grades correct. He got himself straight. He was a starter on the, his junior year, and now he's all conference. As you guys just mentioned, in his senior year, getting looks at from Gardner Webb, Fayetteville State, and you're seeing he's a very volatile part of this defense. Thanks, Chris. As Boaz goes right back to work, nice catch by Kyler Jessup up against the Tarboro sideline. And to wrap up the point on Harrison, Coach Craddock told us. He was his favorite player to see develop from year one to what he is now as a senior. Yeah, it's as a coach, it's something special to have players like that that you really cultivate in the early on in their career and see what they become, just like the train Harrison has become. Boaz now 20 of 28, passing at 300 yards. Jefferson slings it over the middle. Gosnell the catch of the 35, working towards the sticks. He's right up against the marker. Tackle made an open space by Jaquarius Williams for Tarboro. And you know, you see Gosnell there and Coach Tarboro talk, Coach Craddock talked about it from Tarboro coming out of, uh, they talked to Chris Hooks that he's playing lights out, he is, and these receivers know where the windows are in the zone. They sit down in the zone, they expect the ball to be there, and it is. Right on the stretch handoff, gets across the 40. And that's a strong gain of five yards on first down for a rushing attack. East Surrey. They average 150 yards on the ground. This is a balanced offense led by their passing, but they can run it as well. It is. When you spread out a defense, Evan, and you they can't really, they're on their heels and not sure what is coming at them, and you give a little bit of a dose of Elijah Wright underneath, it's, it's tough for a defense to come back from that. Second and five officially as we hit the halfway point of quarter number three. The man in motion is number three, Dylan Mosley. Boaz looks the other way, lobs to the near sideline, and out of bounds, searching for Steven Gosnell. Third down coming up for East Surrey as their senior quarterback, Jefferson Boaz. This is his sixth game over 300 yards passing. The leader in North Carolina in the passing yards, and he has been prolific from the very start. He really has, and he's just a special quarterback, a special talent, someone who's worked very hard, but again, like, Coach Trent Lohman said this week that he's an even kill player. Not too high when things are going great, not too low when things are challenged. Third and five for Boaz. Has Gosnell cross midfield, and Steven Gosnell moves the chains down to the 48-yard line, a gain of 10 on third down. That's just so hard to defend, especially when you have a quarterback who's negotiating the pocket with his feet, 
He's moving his legs. He sees the pocket collapse. He moves to the outside, looks back inside, and fires a frozen rope over the middle of the football field to pick up another first down for the Cardinals. Jefferson Boaz is now coming up on 4,500 yards passing in this senior season. That's top 10 in the country of all of high school football. And there's a whistle on the play before the snap. This might be five-yard penalty on East Surrey. Dead ball, Dead ball. false start, false offense. offense, five yards, five first down. Unlike our first matchup today in the 1A state championship, very few penalties. Each yes. team with just three mistakes. And the five-yard setback moves the ball to East Surrey's side of the field for a first and 15. Tarboro, meanwhile, just two penalties for 25 yards. As Boaz looks over to his head coach and offensive coordinator Trent Lohman for the play call. Lohman, a tunnel screen to the near side. Gosnell the catch near midfield. Gosnell cuts across the middle and gets a lot of that yardage back, setting up a third and six, or second and six, I should say. And the Vikings again ran a stunt on the inside with a tackle looping up behind the nose guard, opening up a passing lane for Boaz to throw into. And he has taken advantage of those vacated defensive passing lanes so far in this game. The tunnel screen is what has made East Surrey so prolific yeah. offensively. They average 300 yards passing, and they're already at 317 here in this third quarter. Gostel, a man in motion. Wright gets the handoff, and he has spun back for a loss. Christian Harrison again in the backfield. A loss of one on the carry. The train. There's the train again. Do you have any train uh, sounds, sound effects? But there he is again as the handoff in the backfield. And Great move on the inside just to stay unblocked. Keeps his outside shoulder free. Works down the line of scrimmage, not too deep in the backfield. Textbook play by Christian Harrison. Harrison had six tackles for loss in the win over John A. Holmes to get to this title game. He's been impressive in this second half. Boaz with an empty set. So much time for Boaz, and time has expired. The train is rolled into the backfield. Harrison with the sack. And now a fourth and long for East Surrey. Well, I'll tell you what, that was great coverage by the Vikings. They only rushed three defenders, and that's why great swim moves spin back to the inside. And there's Harrison coming around the corner to take down Boaz. But because there was such great coverage, Boaz had nowhere to throw. Nice job in zone by the Vikings defense. Jefferson Boaz also serves as the punter for East Surrey. And Tarboro elects to take a timeout, something they have not seen from East Surrey all night long, a punt attempt. And Jeff Craddock wants to talk this one over. We'll take the break as well. Late in the third quarter, Tarboro trailing by two touchdowns. They'll get the football back next here from the 1AA State Championship game presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Yes, really don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, I go to left. Fake them up. Mama, go up, up, up. She did it. Again. You can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Yeah. Uh huh. Welcome back to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Late in this third quarter, East Surrey forced to punt for the first time today, and it's the quarterback, Jefferson Boaz, serving as the punter, back to kick. Left footer sends it away. Nice catch to the 20-yard line, trying to cut up the field and spun down to the 25. The ball is stripped loose. Did they roll him down? Waiting for a rolling here as East Surrey has the football, and it's a turnover. Ty Needham strips it loose, taking it away from Javarius Silver. 
and it's East Surrey football. Well, you see right there, Ty Needham coming in with a host of players, but that's the, that is how you're coached. The rest of the guys hold them up, and you go for the football right there. Ty Needham, before the whistle is blown, rips it out of the grasp of Khalil Staten. Third turnover for Tarboro today. And we go back to our Ingalls food for thought. You talked about doing your job for East Surrey. They've been doing that on special teams. Well, they have been. I mean, all three phases of the game tonight have been terrific for the Cardinals. They have done they have done their job so far with 2.55 to go in the third quarter. Following the punt, Jefferson Boaz gets the football back. He slings it over the middle of the field, finds Gosnell inside the 15, and another first down for East Surrey. How is Tarboro going to slow down Steven Gosnell tonight? Uh, I, Evan, I don't know. And one of the things that they're doing, they're playing the zone coverage, but the receivers know where the windows are based upon what the coverage is. You know, quarterbacks read coverage, and the receivers read leverage. They know what it is. They know what the zones are, and they're sitting down, and Boaz is finding them. Gosnell, one catch shy of his season high. A tunnel screen. Guess who? It's Gosnell inside the five, spinning off a defender. And Gosnell down to the two-yard line. That's his 11th catch as a touchdown-saving tackle by Cameron Powell after the Riddle and Brantley first down. Trent Lohman can smell it right now as his team tries to jump up by three touchdowns over the two-time defending champion Tarboro Vikings. A flag before the snap. And this was thrown by the back judge. Maybe too many men on the field for Tarboro. I think so. there's two flags on the field. That's one way to stop this high-flying attack. <laughs> yep, too many. We'll get the official call here. I'm definitely not an official call. But that's Prior to the snap, illegal substitution. Defense, five, 12 men on the field. Half the distance, first down. Peter Monteverno all over it is now the jumbo package checks in. Keep it on number 13. Isaac Washington in for East Surrey, the tight end position. As Boaz and crew, a first and goal from the one, trying to jump ahead in the final two minutes of this third quarter. Boaz has a rushing touchdown today from one yard out. Now he goes to his left, spins, and is stopped short. Micah Taylor, among many, in on the stop for Tarboro, second and goal. Down by this is a big Michael defensive Taylor. series here for the Vikings, already down by two scores. You know, three turnovers for them to have go up by three touchdowns here, getting towards the end of the third quarter. Man, that's going to be tough to overcome. Especially against a running team in Tarboro that does not throw the football very much. Isuri, meanwhile, trying to get ahead. Second and goal, up by two touchdowns. Handoff, Gosnell tripped up, and he is short. Down to the one-yard line, and he chopped down one of his offensive linemen on the play. Austin Evans slow to get up, as Evans took the brunt end of that hard run by Gosnell. Austin's a gamer. Looking State championship bit, game. Yeah. One of the 18 seniors, and he tried to power in on this run. Gosh, look at Christian Harrison, man. He's just getting up the field there, trying to make a play. It's a little too high on that play, unable to get under the block of Sam Witt. Austin Evans in this offensive line looking to punch it in from the one-yard line on third and goal. Boaz, the senior under center. Play action. Jefferson to the end zone. He's got a man. Caught for a touchdown. Dylan Mosley. East Surrey is up by three scores. Dylan Mosley with his 15th touchdown of the year. Man-to-man -man coverage on the outside against Traquarius Williams. Boaz rolls out, takes a step, and fires a dart, another dart, one of many tonight, for another touchdown. East Surrey trying to add on for the extra point. This is monumental in terms of national significance. We'll dive into that in a second. Kick is on the way. The bullet is through. Tarboro gave up just 41 points all season. They've given up 42 tonight. Final quarter coming up after this quick break on the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina.
Welcome back to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield North Carolina. Dylan Mosley, one of five touchdowns for this high-flying passing attack of East Surrey tonight. And all of a sudden, the Cardinals have scored more points against Tarboro than the entire season total against the Vikings, who are 14-0, riding a record 44-game win streak. Yeah, it's incredible coming into tonight. All the weapons that Jefferson Boaz hat has at his disposal. Gosnell with 56 receptions. Stevens, 51. Mosley, who just scored the touchdown, he had 50 coming into tonight. I mean, it's unbelievable the amount of weapons that this team has. And it shows putting up 42 points on a very good defense. He's sorry to kick this ball off. Here's a loose ball. It's up for grabs. East Surrey thinks they have it on a special teams pooch kick. And it is the Cardinals football. Recovered by number 23. What a play for Luke Bullington. Boy, it looked like number 20 there for the Vikings, Jerome Bridgers. As you see here, trying to make, you know what, those are footsteps. You hear footsteps coming and you don't watch the ball into your bread basket. You look up before the ball is received and that's what happens, turns it over. And that is just a testament to the tenacity that these players from East Surrey have been playing with tonight. When you're running all over the field, you hear footsteps as a receiver and you look down the field before that ball is secured. What a recovery by Hoyt Bullington. And the Cardinals are rolling, first and 10 from the 36. Stevens is open. Back from the injury late in the half, and he gets his first catch of half number two. A first down for East Surrey. A reminder, fans, in the fourth quarter, keep an eye out for the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina play of the game. Be bold, be confident, live fearless. So Stevens is healthy over 100 yards. Gosnell is 160 yards. And as the final seconds tick down to the fourth quarter, Revenge is fresh on the minds of the East Surrey Cardinals. I wonder if Mac Brown's watching this game. See some offensive weapons in the future for the Tar Heels. All these North Carolina commits coming together for a dominant performance here through three quarters of play. We go to the fourth. East Surrey trying to take down the Giants in Tarboro. And we'll have the final quarter next on the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. The Ingalls Advantage isn't just about savings or the best quality food for your family. It's more than that. It's the advantage of being a part of a community. That's why we provide over two million pounds of food every year through regular donations and programs like the Ingalls Giving Tree, Food for Thought, our turkey giveaway, and the Ingalls Fill a Backpack program. It's the right thing to do, and we know you do the same. Ingalls, your neighbor for over 50 years. Start of the fourth quarter here in Durham on the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. We're taking a look at the Tarboro Band performing right now what's been a tough outing for their club, trying to preserve a 44-game win streak. The East Surrey faithful, maybe every citizen in Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, is here tonight checking out this fantastic performance from Jefferson Boaz in the offense. Boaz right back to work after a fumble recovery. Lobs it for the end zone. Stevens is open. The sixth passing touchdown for Boaz. And it's a route here in Durham. Well, it was a blitz again by the Vikings. And Boaz felt it, knew what was happening, tossed it to the corner of the end zone where Stevens was. And at the end of the half, Stevens was injured, writhing in pain on the ground. Comes out of halftime, limping a little bit. He sure isn't limping now. Great job by Boaz in the offense, picking up the blitz for another Cardinals touchdown. Trent Lohman is feeling it on the sideline as his offense is clicking on all cylinders. 48 points against the best scoring defense in North Carolina. It has been an offensive fireworks show tonight. The extra point is good. 49 to 21. Six passing touchdowns for Jefferson Boaz and a beauty of a dime right here. Yeah, if you see the blitzing, they blitz from the outside. They hit him as he threw, and they just throws it to an area, and his receivers go and get the football. That is the difference in this football game. 
the senior leadership from the receivers from the quarterback and you see coach Trent Lowen man he's been waiting for this like we said in the onset 364 days been waiting for this he slaps Jefferson Bo as his quarterback a high five he's feeling it he's only 1156 away from a state title Chris Hooks what could you have more going on right now I tell you what on that play it was a double move that fooled the entire side of this Tarboro defense and Boaz just tossed it right over it was wide open Jefferson Boaz with that passing touchdown now is accounted for 81 total touchdowns this season that's the most in a single season of any player in the state of North Carolina more than Josh Ladowski from 2014 at Lake Norman High School the record holder might just have himself a state title in about 12 minutes. You see Isaac Washington happy in there, saying things to the camera. Jefferson Boaz a moment ago was getting his hands up on the field, talking to his crowd, the crowd responding, roaring. It's an exciting time for East Surrey right now. Gosnell and Stevens, by the way, 20 combined catches. They're nearing 305 yards and four touchdowns. Amazing. How do you stop this passing attack? We don't know, and they've been playing a lot of zone tonight, and you can't cover them, man. Here's another squib kick. Fair catch is called for and made by Tarboro. Tobias Joyner with a smart decision. It was the punt fumble that set up that recent scoring drive. Two plays and 36 yards, and now Tarboro, a team that does not throw the ball particularly well. They need points in a hurry in this fourth quarter. Yeah, and we'll see. Kamani McDaniels does have 344 yards coming in and 24 yards per pass, but again, only throwing it 22 times throughout the year. And Evan, don't forget, this is a team, the Vikings, that have won 44 straight games. Their last loss was in 2016 yeah. in the regional final. Most of these quick kids didn't even have their Sweet 16 in 2016. Fourth longest streak in the country. Taylor Swift was one of the top albums back then and still is today, nonetheless. So we have a flag before the snap. Tarboro staff is a bit upset on the far sideline, and a timeout is called by Jeff Craddock. We'll take the break as well. Early on in the fourth quarter, it's been all East Surrey. You're watching the North Carolina High School Athletic Association one AA state championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Tarboro Vikings, they are fighters undefeated in the regular season, but they are up against it now, trailing by four touchdowns early on in this fourth quarter of the 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Jeff Craddock's team work back to work on offense. A first down handoff picks up four going up the middle, and a strong run there by Tarboro's number 24, Tobias Joyner. This rushing attack for Tarboro, six players with more than 400 yards rushing. In the first half, it was excellent. Over 200 yards on the ground, but the turnovers have really slowed down their chances. That has turnovers are going to be the difference in any game of two powerful teams. You always look at that turnover battle. Three turnovers for Tarboro tonight, two on special teams. Here's a toss out to McDaniels. The quarterback runs the fly sweep, and he only gets a yard tracked down by a couple of East Surrey defenders including Luke Bullington pushing him out. They're just running all over the football field from sideline to sideline tonight. Gosnell's a warrior to see him walking back to the huddle. Steven Gosnell, 160 yards receiving tonight. He also has four tackles. So really doing it all for this East Surrey bunch. A club with 18 seniors that watched themselves get dominated. They lost 50 to 10 in last year's final, and now we're turning the favor here as seniors. Yeah. It's a third and six for Tarboro. New quarterback into the game as well for Tarboro. Number 10, Najee Farmer. Farmer tosses back to McDaniels. 
He looks to throw deep down the field. Nas Black is open down inside the 10. And a touchdown saving tackle by East Surrey's Ty Needham. Here come the Vikings. They're not going down without a fight. Nice play in the backfield. You can only run plays like that once per game. And Coach Jeff Craddock pulls it off and a nice job by Canisius Black. Come down with that football after the cornerback bit. You see coming to the left side of your screen. Canisius Black in stride. Great job. The cornerback bit on the fake in the backfield and the handoff in the backfield to give up that big play. That's a Ridley and Brantley first down. Riddle and Brantley first down. Now first and goal from the three. Handoff going right, spinning. Powell trying for the end zone. He's knocked short. Washington in on the stop and getting some help from his aggressive East Surrey defense. Tarboro has not scored in this second half. In fact, their last points were with seven minutes left in the second quarter. That made it 21 apiece. It's been all East Surrey since. It really has, and now they're up against it. Is East Surrey in the shadow of their own goalpost. The second goal coming here for the Vikings. Braden Bottoms also in on the stop. He's got 20 tackles this year. The junior at 305 pounds, the heftiest defensive lineman for the Cardinals. McDaniels back in at quarterback, gives to Powell, and he's in. Touchdown, Tarboro. Cameron Powell gets right back on the board in the drive less than one minute. There's the quick strike ability of this Viking offense. Put some points on the board, and this game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. Nice handoff, and into the, into the end zone goes Cameron Powell off the left side, untouched. Tarboro electing to go for the extra point. Don't need to go for two just yet, and with the score in this situation, take it seven at a time. Now Leighton Dupree, the sophomore, lines up for the extra point. Good snap, and the kick just sneaks through. Tarboro is back within three touchdowns. 9.21 to go in the fourth when we come back. The final minutes of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. When was the last time you felt free? It's time to uncover that feeling again with the compassion of a cross and shield widely accepted by doctors and specialists and the power of a card that opens doors in all 50 states giving you the freedom to love to dream to dance like no one is watching blue cross and blue shield of north carolina live fearless don't count out tarboro just yet the three yard rushing touchdown for cameron powell makes it a three score game here at the north carolina high school athletic association one double a state championship broadcast Presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Jeff Craddock coaching this no-name Tarboro Club, a team with not the heralded stars of the last two championship runs, but a veteran group trying to come from behind, now down by three touchdowns. And they have the ability to do it. You know, we talked about all the stats and the record and the 44 straight games. They have the ability to climb out of it. They showed you kind of in the last play it was a big third down. They had to convert. They convert it in the big way, and then they get the ball in the end zone for a touchdown to make it a three-score game. All started with the 57-yard pass from McDaniels to Nas Black. Here's a deep kickoff. Gosnell to catch it is 15, and he wisely slides down with no one to help him out. He's Surrey back to work at the 23-yard line. Steven Gosnell has been unstoppable today. He's matched his numbers sake, 12 catches, and 160 yards, really no answer for the senior wide receiver. There's no answer for him. There's no answer for Landon Stevens. Dylan Mosley gets involved. You can see Kyler Jessup get involved with the touchdown. All these guys, all their weapons are showcasing tonight. Gosnell in last year's title game, four catches for 78 yards. He's doubled that, and his team is now up by three touchdowns with nine minutes and 18 seconds left in this one AA state title. Handoff on first down to Gosnell, and he is spun down by Micah Taylor. A stop in the backfield for a loss of one by this Tarboro defense. Still time here for the Tarboro defensively, but they have to get some stops up, and they have not done all night. Right. A lot of personnel changes that they're making right now. 
as McDaniel comes out, a couple different personnel comes in, defensive line playing. Again, all night long, they've been three down linemen, four down linemen, depending upon the down and distance. So Boaz, whenever he's, the only time he's seen a lot of pressure is when they're bringing blitz packages up the middle. East Surrey has run the ball for just 12 yards tonight, so Boaz empties the deck, five receivers on the field. Boaz over the middle. It's Stevens with a catch past the 30. He's across the sticks and up the near sideline to the 40-yard line. A first down to Stevens. He gets out to the 43 and a gain of 22 yards to move the chains. The best part about that play for Landon Stevens is when he broke off his route to the middle of the field, he knew where his defenders were, so he reversed his field after he caught it to the boundary and got up the boundary for a first down. Beautiful use of the football field by Landon Stevens for the first down. Ninth catch of the night for Stevens, who's nearing 160 yards. We may have some records fall offensively tonight as Boaz goes back to work on this first and 10. The University of North Carolina commit, the six foot eight senior quarterback is dealing. Boaz lobs it over to Gosnell, gets a block from right into Tarboro territory. Gosnell down the near sideline, cuts back inside, and all the way to the 11 yard line goes Steven Gosnell. Well, Good luck stopping this guy. I mean, Coach Jeff Craddock for the Vikings said this week that this is the best slip screen team he's ever seen. And you see it right here as Boaz looks to safety up, gets it outside to Gosnell real quick. He breaks the tackle, then takes it right to the boundary, cuts inside right here, stays in bounds, gets down inside the 15-yard line. And again, the Vikings are in the shadow of their own goalpost. 46-yard pitch and catch. That puts Gosnell over 200 yards tonight. 13 catches for 206. A fumbled snap. Boaz somehow slips it out. Catch made of the 10. Working up the field. Diving for the end zone and into the end zone. Kyler Jessup for the touchdown. East Surrey cannot be stopped offensively. 55 points as Mosley scores. Another slip screen. Let's go from the near side slip screen. Let's go to a far side slip screen with Dylan Mosley coming underneath and Sam Witt, the guard, leading the way as the offensive guard gets out to the perimeter and works up the field for the nice block. Low snap. Boaz gets it right out, and you see Sam Witt right there leading the way. Great look by our camera folks. His knees did not get out, his knees did not touch the ground before he got into the end zone. That's the third touchdown of the night for Dylan Mosley, and the kick is good. East Surrey, 56 points against the Tarboro defense that's given up just 41 points all season coming into tonight. An unstoppable offense really taking control. It, it really is. They took control. That's a great way to put it, Evan. It's you know all, all year long they focused on this game, and they've really fine-tuned the offense and the game plan and the schemes. And when you have a quarterback like Jefferson Boaz, the senior who can throw to three or four other seniors, it's a recipe that results in 56 points in the state title game. We figured this game would be a barn burner coming in, but not East Surrey scoring 56 points. A passing offense now at 466 yards, led by their senior quarterback. And what a night for this young man, Jefferson Boaz. Seven more touchdowns passing, and he scored one on the ground as yes, well. Yes, he, he is definitely playing lights out. There's no question. No question. And the last time that this East Surrey team lost a game was in this very game last year to this very Tarboro Viking team. Jeff Craddock searching for answers on the defensive side as his club has been torched in the passing game. Final seven minutes here in the 1AA state championship. And he's sorry to kick it off. A pooch kick to the near side. Now returning this ball is Cameron Powell. Powell cuts across to his sideline. Powell gets a block and is dragged down with the ball, landing out of bounds at the 24-yard line. More slippery conditions and a dangerous fumble there. But Tarboro gets it to the 24-yard line. So here come the Tarboro Ram, the Tarboro Vikings. They have won 44 straight games. That's the fourth longest streak in the country. This is one week after Wake Forest lost. They had the fourth longest streak in the previous week. 
falling in the 4AA regional finals. And now Tarboro in danger of dropping a game themselves here in the 1AA state championship. Tough to be the top dog year in and year out. McDaniels back to work, quarterback design run to the left. Gets a nice block from Powell, as receiver. And McDaniels gets out to the 29 after a gain of five. What seemingly, se what seemingly appears like a insurmountable outcome or an insur insurmountable lead for the Cardinals. At some point, the Vikings have to pick up the pace a little bit here. So they ran out of bounds, 650 left. But you know, the running the football is not going to get the job done. Sometimes they have to get it in the air as they spread out here right now. Tarboro, a running team by trade, and they need touchdowns quickly. McDaniels, the same play as the previous. East Surrey is all over it, and no gain on the rushing attempt. Nice tackle by number 26, Joshua Joyce, and he got some help from this defense. You know, the measure of any defensive player's commitment to his squad is measured by the distance between him and the football at the whistle. And you have seen 11 buckets around the ball carrier tonight by the Cardinals. And when that whistle's blowing, guys are flying to the football and they're two, three yards away from the carrier. And that is a sign of a tenacious defense and a defense that knows the skill they have in carrying out the game plan as they drew it up. Before this third down and six, a timeout called by Tarboro. Timeout, Tarboro. And the Vikings use their final timeout with 6.03 to go. And if you're coach Jeff Craddock, because we asked him coming into the week, what's different about this year's East Surrey team? He said it's the best team he's seen on film all year long, and that's what makes this game so tough. You win a game last year against East Surrey, a completely different team coming to this matchup. Yeah, they, they really were. I mean, Coach Trent Lohman said for the Cardinals that last year in that 2018 game, they learned how to get to that game. And in that game, they learned how to win a game like that. That's what they worked on the offseason. There's been a rallying cry for this team since January when they get in the weight room. And, you know, there's a great shot by Bill Parcells in NFL film saying, you know, this is why you lift all that weight. This is why you do all that stuff. Well, yeah, it's for moments just like this. And really, East Surrey is reaping the rewards of a lot of hard work in the offseason. Those Cardinal fans from Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, trying to bring home a state title for the first time in program history. They're off to an impressive start here with 6.03 to go in this fourth quarter. Led by their quarterback, Jefferson Boaz, who is setting records all over the place. Most touchdowns in a single season. He has 466 yards passing tonight. McDaniels on the misdirection. Now looking to throw. This is on the move, Nas Black. Black uncorks a pass downfield. It's tipped up and knocked away. Excellent job in pass coverage by Tristan Harless. Knocking away the deep bomb, trying to find Micah Taylor. And also in on the stop, Luke Bullington on the deflection. And good coverage on the backside as Micah Taylor ran a go route. They had that little misdirection in the backfield, the handoff. Did you see McDaniels rolling out? coming back the other way. And a good job by the defense getting up the field and ruining the path down the field. Right there, I mean, it's great coverage by, and that's the one thing, defense, no matter how many points they're up by, they're still staying true to their keys, reading their keys, and not letting anybody get behind them as Micah Taylor ran that, that go route. Fourth down for Tarboro, and now clock is stopped. So five more yards for Tarboro, fourth and 11 coming up. This might be the ball game here for the Tarboro Vikings, trailing by four touchdowns. So Tarboro tied at 21 late in the second quarter. It's been a struggle since, and now the punt unit is on. The snap is fumbled. Nicely got away as Dupree just got a kickoff. And I'm waiting to see as Tarboro finally spots the ball down. I don't see a flag on the play at the moment as both teams kind of let the ball fall to its end. I wonder if that was tipped. 
Have an inadvertent whistle. Oh. Re kick. Ooh. So okay. the whistle is what threw everyone off. The whistle must have been before the snap. Yes. That's why there was some confusion some on the rush. Held up on the rush. Right, right. Some Vikings held up and some Cardinals did not. As any defense should. Yeah. Go after the ball until you're yep. told otherwise. Do you hear anything? And now Trent Loma wants an explanation. Did not hear the whistle initially, so good clarification from our officiating crew. Certainly hard to be upset when you're up 28 points if you're Trent Loma, but he wants to put this game away, and one final stop might just do it. Yeah. And one point about Jefferson Boaz, Evan, that his his stats are incredible, tremendous, but just the way he executes, the throws he makes are something that you normally don't see at this level. Uh, the amount of velocity behind the football, the area to the football field he throws at, the spots he throws at, expecting his receivers to be there. It, it's something that you could see why he's going to the University of North Carolina on a scholarship. Those are, those are traits that normal quarterbacks at this level don't have. Here's today's Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina play of the game, and it comes by East Surrey. A beautiful touchdown strike from Jefferson Boaz. I mean, Jefferson Boaz standing in the pocket. You see right there, over to one of his favorite receivers, Stephen Gosnell, over defenders, and throwing it in an area where only Stephen can get it, low and outside. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, be bold, be confident, Live fearless. Now a chance for East Surrey to run out the clock as Quincy Smith gets his second carry of the night. Eight total touchdowns for Jefferson Boaz, including three to Dylan Mosley. A receiving core. Their top three targets have combined for seven touchdowns. Just video game-like numbers. And they're approaching 400 total yards as a unit against a defense that gave up an average of two points a game the entire year. Just incredible. Incredible output by a great football team. Keep in mind the record for touchdowns in a championship game is eight. That may be tough to come for the quarterback Boaz tonight as there's a first down carry up the middle and moving the chains. For Quincy Smith, the senior running back. A riddle and Brantley first down. 18 seniors on this motivated bunch who lost in last year's final 50 to 10. It's been a complete flip of the script tonight. And East Surrey is four minutes away from putting the icing on a championship cake here in the 1AA state finals. And this is going to vault this program for East Surrey into a different stratosphere. And for Jeff Craddock and the Tarboro Vikings, what an incredible season. I mean, you know how many teams would, would give their left arm to be in a position like this tonight? Boaz slings it out to Stevens. He's working towards midfield. Stevens spins out of a tackle, and he's dragged down to the 45-yard line, finally stopped by Darek Moore, the senior, and another first down catch for Stevens. Riddle and Brantley first down, injured in an accident. Call Riddle and Brantley when justice counts. The clock's still moving. You know, the best part about this is the offense knows where they are in position on the field, the position in this game, and they're letting the play clock run down until one second before they're, they're snapping that ball, knowing that Tarboro doesn't have any timeouts, and they're just looking to get off this football field with the title as quick as they can. The play clock is down to eight. No rush for Jefferson Boaz, the senior quarterback, who's accounted for eight total touchdowns tonight. Right on the handoff. It's tough to stop Christian Harrison with a tackle for loss. That's his third of the night. And the choo-choo train keeps on churning for this defensive line at Tarboro. Yeah, he's a special player, Christian Harrison. He has played great on the interior of this Viking defense tonight. He has been their MVP for sure on the defensive side of the ball. It's going to come up in a losing effort, but an impressive performance by Harrison. Five tackles tonight. A Tarboro team that's actually very young, all things considered. Their right. third straight trip to the state finals, facing an East Surrey team with 18 seniors that knew this may be their final chance to make a statement. Second and 10 as the play clock hits one. Hard running for this East Surrey tailback, and he'll get out to the 39-yard line. 
And coming off the bench is Hoyt Bullington, the senior running back. Third and short coming up for East Surrey. Talking about Trent Lohman for the Cardinals, he said, he addressed his entire team in January, we're setting up 2019 in three phases. Win your non-conference, win the conference, and then win the state. And they've carried it out. You set out a goal, and when you achieve that goal, there's no better feeling, especially when you're doing it with teammates. And this is one team that they will remember forever, these guys, uh, deep into their lives. Third and short, and East Surrey's not going to get it as Bullington is cut down. Final minute and a half in this fourth quarter in a game that was back and forth through the first two quarters, 21 apiece, and East Surrey late in the second jumped in front, and the passing attack of Mr. Jefferson Boaz right there has put East Surrey well out in front trying to dethrone the two-time 1AA state champs. This young man has an incredible future ahead of him. We're definitely going to be seeing him on Saturdays. There's a potential we could be seeing him on Sundays. He has that much talent, and he's only going to mature. He's 18 years old. He's going to mature. He's going to get better. He's going to get stronger. He can't get taller, <laughs> but he's going to become an even better football player than what we've seen tonight. East Surrey burns a timeout before this fourth and three. They are three yards away from getting the first down and kneeling the football out. East Surrey circled this date on their calendar from the second they fell 50 to 10 last year in the state championship game. East Surrey, the best passing attack in the entire state of North Carolina. And Jefferson Boaz is going to get a curtain call off the field, a chance to celebrate their senior quarterback. Eight touchdowns tonight. And now Boaz goes to the bench celebrating his state championship. You know, his head's a little low, and, and tears wouldn't be a surprise as he hugs his coach, Trent Lohman. These guys have worked together for so long. And you can see the emotion right there with both men celebrating a state title. As he puts his arms up, you know, it's, it's bittersweet as well as you see the, the assistant coaches as he helps bring that state championship to the East Surrey Cardinals. And, you know, it's bittersweet. I say that because you know that you love these guys. You've played with them for so long, sometimes from peewee years. And as a senior, this is the last high school game you're ever going to play. And you'll never play with these group of guys again. And there's nothing more special to have a bond with these guys in, in high school football. And you're seeing it on display tonight. Trent Lohman felt like East Surrey was on the map last year getting to a state final. Well, they have punched their ticket to a major victory tonight, taking down the Tarboro Vikings, the two-time champions of 1AA. And now just a few yards away from putting this game on ice for the fourth and three coming up. The new quarterback in for East Surrey is Folger Boaz, the younger brother of Jefferson and the tackle for loss. There's a stop. Guess who? It's Christian Harrison. And now Tarboro gets the ball back with 44 seconds to play. So a little taste of the future. Yeah. There with Folger in there at quarterback. Yep. Big shoes to fill. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. But uh... so how about the Tarboro Vikings here as they come up short tonight? A 44-game win streak. Two years plus of winning. While the record may come to a close, it was a valiant three-year stretch that was stopped by an excellent team in East Surrey. You don't do those things by mistake. And we asked Coach Craddock this week, how does that happen? And it's about guys being, buying into the program. They buy into the ideals. They buy into the goals. And, you know, he commended his tremendous coaching staff. These things don't happen by mistake. 44 straight wins it is an immeasurable feat. It's tremendous in the game of football. And hats off to Coach Craddock and his Tarboro Vikings for a 44-game winning streak. We got some movement the line of scrimmage before the snap. Should be an encroachment on Caleb Tilly. Defense. Five yards, first down. So Tarboro, the fourth longest active streak, 44 straight wins. That's going to come to an end tonight. But Jeff Craddock has to be so proud of his club, especially with his son as a senior captain on this defense going out as a state finalist a bit short tonight but not despite an excellent season at 14 and 1 
Now falling on the football. There's the quarterback, Kamani McDaniels. That should be it. Tarbro does not have to snap the football here, and East Surrey knows it. Take a look at your new 1AA state champions. The East Surrey Cardinals taking down the Giants in the Tarboro Vikings. Their first loss in 45 games. And Trent Lohman knows he is a state champion. His third year with this program gets him to a state final and this year wins the state championship. Your East Surrey Cardinals dethrone the two-time champions taking down Tarboro in a fantastic display from the Cardinals. And there is Trent Loman with one of his children walking there in the middle of the field, embracing her. It's going to be quite the meeting at midfield between him and, and Coach Craddock as they shake hands right there. Both of them exchange pleasantries, talking to each other. Amazing respect between these two men. You saw it this week in the press conference. They talked to each other. They had a little fun with each other. And you see the amount of respect both men have for each other. This is sportsmanship at its finest. The handing of the torch from one state champion to the next. And now East Surrey, the small town team from Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. They're going to be driving home champions tonight, taking down the Tarboro Vikings 56 to 28, led by the do-it-all quarterback Jefferson Boaz. Eight total touchdowns, nearly 500 yards passing. We knew the offenses could score. We just didn't expect East Surrey to continue to score all night. It was special. It was a special game to watch, to experience, uh, to witness uh, this offense and all the weapons they have and uh, what they've done to work themselves to a point where they felt like they could compete on the highest level possible. And they did it tonight, bringing home that title. Now we go down to the winning head coach, Trent Lohman. He's with Chris Hooks. Coach. 365 days ago, you, you had the heartache of losing that state championship game. Now to today, how's it feel? <laughs> it hadn't sunk in yet, but so far it feels great. <laughs> well, again, just talk about the performance that your offense put on today, Jefferson Boaz and that trio of receivers. I mean, that's a special, special group. Oh, it is. It is. And, and there's more than just those three. Benji guys and them made some big catches today, too, and Elijah right out of the backfield. But... I mean, they've done it all year. They've wanted this, this moment right here since we left last year. And uh, they've worked for it, and they earned it. And our offensive line played their butts off for them tonight, too. It was great. And one thing that I've really been impressed about you, and a lot of high school coaches, obviously, you care about these kids. And you could just tell when, you, when this game was in the bag, the, you, the emotion started flowing for you and the guys. You know, what does this mean for you? What does this mean for East Surrey in the, in the city of Pilot Mountain? It's great. I don't know what it means yet. <laughs> I just know it's great, and I'm ready to celebrate with them. <laughs> All right, Coach, go enjoy that. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Back to you guys. Thank you, Chris Hooks. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, the trophy presentation here from the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, one AA state championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. And now introducing the 2019 North Carolina High School Athletic Association 1AA state champions, the East Surrey Cardinals. At this time, we recognize head coach Trent Lohman of the state champions from East Surrey to come forward and receive a special plaque of recognition. We now ask the captains of the state champions to join their head coach to receive their championship plaque and their championship banner. Members of the state champions will also be receiving special commemorative t-shirts. There's a look at your 1AA state champions. The East Surrey Cardinals bringing the first football title home to Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. It was a dominant performance here tonight. East Surrey, 56 to 28 winners over the two-time champions in the 1AA, 
Tarboro Vikings. And your final score, East Surrey 56, Tarboro 28, and the 1AA State Championship broadcast presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. It was an impressive passing performance. Seven touchdowns for Jefferson Boaz. Tarboro went punch for punch in the first half, but running away with it, the East Surrey Cardinals with the win. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you next year for the 2020 state championships. But tonight, it's East Surrey and that passing attack led by Jefferson Boaz pulling away for a 56 to 28 win. East Surrey, your one double A state champions. Have a good night and we'll see you next year. This is where it starts. Where your story begins. This is the trail you blaze yourself. And step by step, you get stronger, faster, better. This is where it starts. How will you finish? Angles, we're with you every step of the way.